Hey friends, over 60% of you are listening to me right now on an Apple product. iPhone, iPad, iTunes. I need your help. The truth is, Apple will make this podcast more discoverable to new listeners the more reviews it has. So I'm here asking you to take a moment and leave a review. If you've gained any value from this podcast, the greatest thing you can do for it, besides spreading the word and telling friends, is leaving a review. It's real simple. If you're on your phone, head over to my podcast page within the Apple Podcast app and leave a review. Or, if you're on a computer, you can head over to my podcast page within the iTunes app. That's it. That's all I ask. And if you have other podcasts that you love, do them a favor and do the same for them. It'll make their day. Now let's get this podcast started already. been here before i have been this would have been years ago i brought yeah. my wife here probably i'm just trying to think of the years in my head i want to say like 2009 2010 it's okay. been a while so for it's me it's been a while what, yeah. and what did you and your wife do when you were here back i want then? to say we probably did go-karts okay of course that that was a go-to at one point there was some sort of a virtual reality like one of those things where you sit in it and spins and <laughs> the all that max air <laughs> yeah the max air how, how long have you been here by the way never worked uh i've only been here for three years okay uh and it's interesting because uh you know i i started as a coaster enthusiast so yeah I, i've been a coaster enthusiast since uh 99 2000 well really i guess 2000 cause yeah 99 I, I, I just knew of coasters yes uh but in 2000 I, I turned into a coaster enthusiast when millennium force was being built yeah and uh back then i lived in minnesota and so uh we were just like hey there's this crazy coaster being built it's like <laughs> right when the internet's really yeah. kind of starting out like you really at that point all you did was actually search information on the internet yeah it was like an encyclopedia and that's really what it was yeah but uh you know maybe some chat rooms or something like that but there's nothing <laughs> uh, aol instant messenger that's what you'd have to communicate but uh you know, we just got word that they're building this huge coaster in yeah. Ohio, and uh, it was a fourteen-hour Cedar car Point. Ride. Yep, Ohio- Cedar okay, Point. yeah, there you go. And uh, we're like, okay, well, let's let's all just do it like a summer trip, like three days. You know, just boom, boom. We'll drive all day, yep. get there, do it a couple of days, drive back, and, and we fell in love. And so we were, right. we went back back. Uh, we were really fans of Cedar Point because we didn't know yeah. other coasters. And uh, and then we just you know I moved out here and discovered hey there's more <laughs> than just you know Ohio and Minnesota yeah. and uh, and now you know we're just I've very you know I've had a huge love for coasters for a very long time now yeah I remember uh, I remember I, I've I've been running up and down streets with this guy for twenty plus yeah. years and I could tell you I think it was uh, Six Flags America which is kind of it's not my favorite park. I'll just put Barely it at that. Yeah. Like, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been when it when did Superman come? Was that ninety nine, two thousand? Yeah, it would have been around that time. So yeah. we Late we 90s. at some point we hear about this tall coaster. We don't know that Superman, we don't know anything about it other than it's two hundred and some odd feet. And you can yeah. see it sticking out over the trees. Uh-huh. And so at one point we decide it, we're we're on like spring break or something, and, and sometimes they open the parks kind of early and we're like what if we just drive all the way out there and we drive all the way out there the damn place is closed like we go all the way out there <laughs> and so I, I was just thinking about what you said about going out to cedar point for this coaster that you heard about i'm like what the hell happens if you drive all the way out there and it's closed like it's, it's almost like, like clark griswold clark, i was just gonna say <laughs> sorry folks park is closed right moose out front should have told you <laughs> and then you just punch the new moose right in his dumb face <laughs> oh man yeah great movie but yeah i mean well yeah and you gotta you gotta think back like in Clark Griswold days like yeah. that, you know, that probably was a common occurrence. Oh yeah. Like if the park had Definitely. to close, they didn't have the internet to get that word out. You had to you had to call and find out if it was going to be open. You know, you you had know, to go right? through stuff. But so uh, we, we have a photography crew here, yeah. by the way. They take is, photos. Do I here need to put my hat on for this? Uh, no, okay. <laughs> it's here. It's we're, in the room. We'll so. get a picture of the hat. Okay, I, I hear right. this hat is all very right. famous. By know, the way, I know the beanie is the beanie is more famous <laughs> than I am. So um, lens cap. Don't forget to yeah. take off the lens cap. I was going to see how long it took him to figure that one Let out. See. He's still new to photography. <laughs> <laughs> so what what brought, what brings you to Virginia when you when you moved from uh, Minnesota? Well, I uh, I, w- I was in radio and yeah. so radio uh, radio yeah. Oh, I'm I, a uh, big radio fan. Oh, I who are some of your guys? <laughs> I'm you, not you, a radio. You're fan not a radio fan. You didn't like no, it. I uh, I was a TV guy. Like okay. I wanted to be on camera and behind the camera. Yes. I wanted to be everything. Yeah. And in in TV, especially in the late '90s, there you couldn't do both. You had yeah. to, you had to do one or the other. 
And now it really is, you, you have to do both. Like, you know, a reporter for, like, a Richmond station is probably their own cameraman. Like, they have to set it up somewhere or do something. Yeah. But, um, you know, back in those days, I wanted to be everybody. And we, for my high school, went to a radio station. Yeah. And we uh, did, like, our TV show from the radio station I fell in love with. I was like, I get to be the technical crew. I can be on air. Right. I could do all of it. And so, I, you know, I just bugged them for, like, a full year to get yeah. an internship. And they finally said, just stop calling and get in here because we can't stand it. God, I've, I, you know, I, I wanted to get into uh, radio for so freaking long. I was always uh, a fan of doing... Uh, I had to turn that flash off. It was killing me, man. <laughs> um, it's my fault. I didn't tell him. But, you know, uh, I always thought about, like, wanting to get on radio. Like, in my early days of, like, podcasting, internet radio, it was always, how do we be, like, Howard Stern or, like, yeah. Bubba the Love Spudge or, like, one well, of these guys? And it's funny because, uh, you know, I, I when I... So I was in Radio Minnesota, yeah. which is, you know, it's Minnesota. So, yeah. uh, But I, when I flew out here for my job interview, yeah. uh, I thought I was going to Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> I had, Boy, no, I had no clue anything about What is East in Vermont? Coast. I mean, I'm no sure it's probably a nice I was, place. Well, I was exciting. But, yeah. I, was, I was excited because they have skiing there. And I'm yeah. from Minnesota. I'm like, oh, yeah, they got great skiing in Vermont. <laughs> I'm going you know, to be on the slopes all day and do my uh, shift at night and all that. Yeah. And I got to the airport and I'm like, oh, I'm flying to Virginia. What's in Virginia? <laughs> I have no clue. And uh, I had, I didn't even know it was that close to D.C. Okay. And I was flying into D.C. So I, I'm landing and I'm like, that looks like. DC, like yeah. that looks like the capital. It's and not so, Vermont. Yeah, it's not Vermont for <laughs> sure. But, and then I, you know, I got really excited because I was like, well, you know, Howard Stern used to be uh, on DC, so maybe you know I yeah. can get the you know DC one hundred and one and all yeah. that. And, and uh, yeah, so I worked at uh, B one hundred one point five for oh, no three kidding, years. wow. And, uh, and uh, one day I, I, well, they they said, you know, we're probably going to go a different direction, so you might want to start looking for a job. And I said, <laughs> I quit. <laughs> what what so, were you doing at the station again? Uh, on air seven to midnight. So oh wow! Actually, so you're spinning funny. records. Well, it was it was well, all in Scott well, I know. digital system. But sure, yeah. I, I'm I'm trying to use the lingo. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to fit in oh, here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, throwing those carts Hot in and jock stuff. it and all that. Uh, yeah. So seven to midnight, and actually the seven to midnight jock right yeah. now at B101.5 is our DJ that's playing out there right now. Bill no Carroll. kidding. And, and that's how I got to know Bill. I was because in radio you don't make any money. Yeah. You have to you have to have like six jobs. Yeah. So I was I, during the day I was a server at Olive Garden. And he was the bartender at Olive Garden. I was like, dude, you got a great voice. You need to come in and do some like liners and stuff. And then he actually took my job when I left. So wait, and he's, he's been there ever since. I don't mean to cut you off. So you mean to tell me that all these times I hear these guys on the radio bitching about their money, they're being real. That's not shtick. <laughs> there's there's a joke that's very very appropriate. It's a uh, what's the difference between a uh, a DJ and a large pizza? What is what is the difference? A large pizza can feed a family of four. <laughs> oh man, that's brutal. Yeah, it was. I, I think when <laughs> I left, uh, the highest paying gig I had was I think twenty three a year. Wow. And so I was. There's just no money in it. And I mean, obviously, people make it work. You know? Yeah. I, I'm sure that's not what they're getting paid now. That's like trying to but, flip pizzas and live in Manhattan. Yeah. Like oh, imagine just, that. Yeah. There's no it's, way. It's, it's, you're going to be pick, picketing for fifteen dollars an hour wages <laughs> and stuff. You know. Like yeah. They do. But uh, no, I mean, I'm sure. Now it's a little different, but also being an on-air jock is different now. You don't right. have the same, uh, you know, you don't get to be the personality, I guess you could have been in like the 70s and 80s, yeah. maybe even a little bit in the 90s. Beat a 101.5. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they just started, how you doing there? <laughs> you know, you, could, you really had, uh, when you were a jock, you know, when back in the heyday, you yeah. really had control over what you were doing with yeah. your show. Where now it's so automated that uh, you know it's 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 just going to be a different experience. God, let's play this same song thirty times today. Oh, yeah, well, I don't miss that part. I do miss <laughs> being on the air. I, I love that part, but uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I definitely do not miss hearing the same music <laughs> over and over again. And I, I actually, when I left radio, I went into uh, being a DJ in like clubs and stuff. Yeah. And uh, well, I should like? say clubs, clubs in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So sure. it's really Hard Times Cafe. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, but it was, you know, and, and I. So when I grew up, yeah, all I listened to was Disney soundtracks because I was a nerdy kid. Right. And then I got a job in radio, so all I knew was like hot AC, like B one hundred one point five yeah. kind of music. And so then you go to a club. I don't know any. I don't know Fifty Cent or Usher. Or I don't know any of that kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, I, I I was terrible, and uh, I only yeah. did like three gigs, and they're like, yeah, no, that's all right, <laughs> but thanks. And uh, and I got into karaoke DJing, and I don't sing very well anyway. Oh, I, I love I, karaoke, I but. Uh, 
I, I loved doing the yeah. DJ portion and, and doing some dance mixes in, in between. And then I started getting the hang of learning the new music and stuff. And then, you know, I went from that to, you know, Hard Times. Down here, Hard Times is a big thing, you know. I know yeah. they have it up in, in Maryland and stuff, too, but it's not. I mean, we, we had Puddle of Mud at our at our Hard Times last night. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, so our, our Hard Times was huge. And wait, wait I, you mean like last night, last, last night? Last night at our Hard Times here Puddle of Mud. Yeah, Puddle of Mud. Wow. So, I mean, we when I left Hard Times three years ago, about yeah. three or four years ago, our company, Two Guys Productions, yeah. uh, and he's still doing it. Like, he ran sound, uh, Two Guys, he, Bob, he's my partner. Yeah. Uh, he was probably running sound or at least set up the sound system for Puddle of Mud, and then they had their guy running. Sure. But uh, it's still his sound system at Hard Times. And so that's what we did. And I, I thought, go around. I th- I'm sorry. I thought, no. the, I thought the singer of Puddle of Mud was, like, in jail or something. Maybe. Or did they get, like, a, like I, a replacement? I, I just know that Puddle of Mud, in some sense, was there last night. And I mean, we, we ran yeah. sound for Fuel, Puddle of Mud, no kidding. Uh, uh, Stained, you know, it's all, you know, they have a, a whole bunch of like, uh, you know, I'll call it kind of like harder rock uh, kind of style of bands sure, come through sure. there from like the 90s. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that sounds really awesome, though. Yeah. And I mean, it was it was definitely a unique lifestyle because, you know, I would I would uh, go to work at 9 p.m. Right. Uh, well, I mean, if, if Puddle of Mud was coming, I'd have yeah. to get there at like four to set up set or up three to set yeah. up or set up the night before. But uh, and uh, so, you know, if it was just a DJ night, I just, OK, get there at 9 p.m., yeah. start playing music at 930. And, uh, you know, last calls at 1.30, I'm out the door at 2 because our system would just stay there. So I wouldn't have to pa- pack it up or anything. Yeah. And uh, and then we go out to like. You know, Waffle House or Denny's or something like that, and, <sighs> and then I, I get on the Xbox <laughs> and play you know, with California friends on yeah. uh, Call of Duty until like six or seven in the morning, <laughs> and then I go to bed and just wake up whenever I woke up. Yeah, and, and no alarm clock, no nothing. Just whenever I woke up is when I woke up, and I go back to work. You know, dude, I'm I'm just blown away at the parallels right now. It's like a lot of people <laughs> don't realize when they listen to this podcast that like. When when I'm talking to people, like this is the first time we're talking, right? Yeah. Like we did, we just met today. That's this right. Is no BS. And like, like you're talking about being in radio, and like we're gonna get into all the theme park stuff. I'm like, man, this is a lot of stuff that I'm like really into. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, it's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> and kudos, and kudos, yeah, and kudos to to my buddy because here's the thing. Last summer, because I, I know a lot of people listening, they're like, oh, you know, uh, normally we hear a lot about weight loss stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So last summer, I went back to King's Dominion for the first time. I listened to that podcast today. So. Did you really? I, yeah, I was no like, kidding. hey, I'm going to go Look back and listen to the, the Roller Coaster podcast. Right. So, yeah. So, okay. So and now I'm you've heard very familiar. Story. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to uh, the walk of shame, yes. I'm a big guy. So yeah. I'm 310 as of this morning. Okay. And uh, my peak, I was at 325. Big guys represent, yep. by the way. Fist yep. bump. Boom. And, uh, you know, I'm, I definitely am trying to get on the weight loss train. But as you've talked about in, in your podcast, it, it's... It's hard. Yeah, you, know, you, you bounce on. You're on it for a couple of weeks, and then uh, uh, you know Zach brought in eggnog for me tonight. You know how much calories are in an eggnog? <laughs> I can only imagine. It's one thousand okay, calories in go. a little wawa. You know, self serving. The uh, little, yeah. the little it serving. Like, it was, it was, it was a little serving. It said one hundred and eighty <laughs> calories, and there's four servings in there. I was like, you got to be kidding yeah. me. How was this four <laughs> servings? You know, but uh, you know, and so you know the the things that you have talked about in that podcast, yeah. I have gone through. You know, I can't fit on Drop Tower at King's Dominion right now. Neither can I. Uh, I can't fit on uh, Delirium. Uh, Volcano, if it was open, which it's not, yeah. uh, I couldn't fit on that right now I if I bar- wanted to. barely made it on Volcano. Last year, I, I lost uh, uh, a good amount of weight, and I was able to get on Volcano, That's but like awesome. actually buckle myself in. Yeah. But you know, you talk about the guys coming over and stapling oh, yeah. you on, like <laughs> jumping on the restraint to get you on. I've had that, you know, every, like, they just keep jumping. You yeah. got this. Don't <laughs> stop until you hear ribs crack. Yes. But, uh, you know, they finally get it buckled in. But last year, I got down to a point where I could buckle it myself. Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, I was yeah. super excited about it. And, uh, you know, of course, things happen and, yeah. and uh, weight came back on. But, uh, you know, I, I'm really hoping that uh, I could turn that around. Like, I got a, a week vacation starting tomorrow. Nice. So I'm hoping right after that, you know, I'm going to, okay, let's start homing this in and getting serious about this. So And you're starting off your vacation with this podcast. Lucky yeah, you. Th- there you go. Yeah, I got to I got to go. I told him. I, he said, you know, what days are you available? I said, well, this Friday I'm good, and then yeah. I'm not available until December. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, that's that's about it. But, uh, yeah, no, me, uh, yeah. Because he told me, um, we were talking about the theme park thing. He's like, this guy, Clint, you got to talk to him, man, because he knows all about the theme parks and you know you you were talking about the uh, this past summer has been crazy going uh-huh. to the parks which i think i talked about a lot in that podcast yeah. and 
it, it was it's crazy. You talk about the walk of shame, like going on. Uh, it was flight of fear. Mm-hmm. This is 2010 flight yeah. of fear and having to walk away. And there's people that are looking and they look a little frustrated because you're holding up that ride. And, and you it's know, tough, it's tough, man. It, I, I, I like to say uh, it doesn't bother me. I, yeah. I'll say that. Sure. But it does. You of know, it, it, it's obviously embarrassing in the sense that you uh, I mean, I'm not worried about making them wait for me. I'm OK. I, I could yeah. care less about that. But, uh, you know, just the fact that it's, it's embarrassing just to myself. You know, yeah. how could I let myself get this bad that uh, I can't do something that sure. I love so much, you know? Yeah. And it's been a struggle, you know. When I lived in Minnesota before I moved here, I was two twenty five. Wow! And I thought I was fat then. You yeah. know, I was like, "Oh me man, too. girls aren't going to like me this way. I got to get down <laughs> to weight," you know. And then and and uh, and there was when you know Millennium Force there was an issue, uh, not to Millennium Force, but the the company Inamin I sure. uh, had a death on a coaster up at uh, I believe Six Flags New England, you okay. know, in the early two thousands, uh, probably two thousand four, two thousand five, somewhere in there. And they had to tighten the belts on all those style roller coasters. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to Cedar Point in like 30 days. I need to get down to weight. And so yeah. I like buckled. Like that night, I ran a mile. No I kidding. I don't run at all. Yeah. And, I, and then the next night, I ran two miles. Like I was serious about this. And yes. I cut a lot of weight. And there was no need to. Like I fit easily. Like the, the, yeah. the things they put online were not reflecting of what actually was happening. Yeah. And um I, I, you know, that was probably the lowest I'd been when I lived here. But then, yeah, you put it all on. You know, I'm yeah. a married guy now, so you know, You're happy I, weight, <laughs> happy weight, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. I can't tell you how much anxiety I had, like googling different parks, like let's just say Cedar Point, big and tall, or like I'd put that in the Google <laughs> search and like see like big some Trip seat. Advisor, mm, yeah, yeah, big boy seat, and see like what Trip Advisor form or something would come up, like. Just the anxiety. We went to uh, Six Flags uh, in New Jersey. I love Great that adventure. Place. Oh my love god! It. And that, I think for me, uh, King Ka was the big draw for me because mm-hmm. I'd seen it on like uh, Discovery World's Channel. World's tallest coaster. Yes, yeah. seen it so many times, and I'm like, if I can just get there and ride that ride, um, I feel like uh, you know all this this journey would be worth it. Mm-hmm. And luckily, that ride actually has very similar restraints to Intimidator. Intimidator yeah. It which has, is, you, okay, you it's want very me generous. to get you want me to get really nerdy on you? Let's do it. Those are the restraints from Intimidator. Like they actually, actually they remove them the, from Intimidator and move them up there. So get out of no, here. I swear to God, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I'm not joking at all. That's that's crazy. why they're red. <laughs> because they, they, they had used their restraints, and so then they, they bought the old restraints from King's oh Dominion. Because King's Dominion now has, like, the soft restraint. Oh, I wish they put those on in, on King Ka. Oh, my God, because you get the head chop? It yeah. hurts so bad. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, man. Looking down just that straightaway, right? Mm-hmm. And that launch is by far the worst most thing. Most intense, yeah. The most intense, and you're going up, and the anxiety is just at an all-time high. Heart's beating, but, dude, when I got to the top, when I got to the peak, and they like to let you just chill there for a second, yep. I remember my arms going stretched out like this. Like, I'm <laughs> on top of the world! <laughs> Like, I'm going. I wish, I wish they took the picture from up there. Up I wish they had, like, yeah, the that's, camera, that's like, the up only there. way it makes sense is up top. But oh no. my God. That'd be an epic so photo. When I first did, uh, okay, so King Ka is the world's tallest and fastest, yes. but the one before that was Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar yeah, Point. And still regarded as probably the better of the two coasters because it doesn't have the over the shoulder restraints. It's just a lap bar. Wow. But it also means big boys can't fit on it. So it's, it's a tight coaster. Yeah. But the first time I rode that, I waited 16 hours. Wow. So it was 16 hours. It was broken. Okay. And we were there for our week long trip. And uh, like on day three, uh, there was somebody sitting in front of the ride saying, oh, we're not opening today. Well, the only reason why they put that person there is because it might open. Whenever there's someone there turning people away, that means they're staffing the ride Ah. to a point where, oh, it could be open. Pro tip, folks. Pro tip. Yep, yep. So we we talked to, uh, we, we got in line that morning, like right when they opened. And they, yeah. the guy was like, it's not opening today. We're like, yeah, then why are you here, buddy? Yeah. You know, kind of thing. And and so we sat there, and uh, yeah. by the afternoon, the maintenance people were saying, you know, there's a good chance we're going to have it open. And uh, we bought Cedar Pointopoly from the gift shop, and we played, like, board games wow. in line there. And uh, once we got towards the end of the night, uh, it started getting, like, vicious. Like, people were cutting in front of people who had been in line for nine ten hours at yeah. that point so they were getting really pissed it's off like waiting in line for yeah. concert tickets so securities were coming over and they're, they're getting in and, and they were testing at that point yeah and uh and then they said we're not going to open it because of the state 
of the midway right now because people are just so upset with people budding in front of them. Yeah. So uh, that was 12 hours of waiting, and then we jumped back in line the next morning, and it was another four before they could get it open, and they finally got it open. Oh we're God. first right now. This reminds me of back in 98, 99 when Volcano opened. Yeah. And when the sign said legit, like, a five- to six-hour wait, they weren't kidding. <laughs> They're not joking. It's and still that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, now it's broken. But well, yeah, <laughs> ain't nobody waiting open, in that line. <laughs> when it was open, it was, it was was it's crazy. And I mean, the line was all the way back up down, like, Main Street. I mean, that's how far that line went oh, yeah. back in those days. It's nuts. And uh, so last year with my weight loss goal, you yeah. know, I said – Okay, I'm going to buy this. They have a they have a fast lane, which yes. means you get the bud in front of the line. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to buy that because it includes Volcano, and I'm going to get down the weight, and I'm going to get on Volcano. Right. And I did. And I, every Hell time yeah, I would go, did. I'd ride it like 15 times. I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> budding in front of I'm a, I want to ride it so many times that yes. it pays for itself like a dollar a ride. Yeah. And I didn't get that many rides on it, but I got Fair like enough. close to 100. And, uh, no kidding. And, uh, you know, like I said, I went from you barely getting the restraint – Buckled. Yeah. Well, I went from not fitting on it to getting the, uh, the you know, them having to re- uh, buckle me to buckling myself. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So re- I lo- it's my favorite ride there. It's still, it's still a phenomenal ride. I, not I right was, now because it's broken. No. <laughs> well, not right now. Technically, I. It was all summer. It's, it killed us. I feel like I was slightly disappointed about uh, Flight of Fear, though. Like when I finally got on, I'm like, eh. It's not what I remember it. It's not as yeah. It's not as good, but it still feels good to get on it. Oh sure, sure, yeah. The the symbolism. I mean, I I cried. I I legit cried because if you remember, like the way that summer went, it started in April. I was I I went on just the Intimidator. I'm like, let Mm -hmm. me just get on one ride. Like I'm not going to try any other ride. I'm going to walk in these gates. I bought a season pass because that's how committed I was. Yeah. I'm like, all right. I'm going to walk down to Intimidator. Can I ride Intimidator? And if I can, then I'm going to ride that. I don't know, six, seven, eight times, and I'm just going to leave. I'm not even going to attempt another ride. I may fit on a couple of rides, but I'm not mm-hmm. even going to go anywhere near these rides. And then, like, a month or two later, then I'm like, let's try Dominator, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But they got the big boy seats. Yeah, they, yeah, they and do. I still need those, even though I, you know, I still yeah. got a little bust in the front here. But um, I got on that, and then I'm trying to think of what the next one was. Maybe I went for Flight of Fear next. I think at that point I was starting to build up the confidence. Yeah. And I conquered it, and I could not believe it. I did go, though. I made the mistake of the same day. I broke my own rule, and I went over to Volcano to try. Because <laughs> you got excited, yeah, and, and that's a tight work. one. Yeah. Volcano and Dominator have the same restraint. Or not okay. Dominator. Uh, uh, Drop Tower and Volcano have the okay. same restraint. Oh, so wow. if you get on one, you can get on the other. No kidding. And uh, they have a test seat for both of them. But uh, the test seat... How will, accurate are those things really? It's going to be tighter than it would be on the ride itself. Yeah. Uh, and that, and you don't have an employee pushing down for you. So yeah. the, that kind of helps uh, when you have the employee... That's what that's what pissed it. me off about Six Flags, because I actually went there this past summer, and I knew that I could fit on the Super... Like, I got on Superman, everything went down nicely, but they weren't pushing hard enough. And they have to, I guess, I'm just guessing, they have to reach like a certain threshold. Yeah. It, a light will come on or yeah. something is yeah. signaling them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just I felt like I they weren't even trying. It. I haven't fit on Superman in probably 10 years. Yeah. Like, and I, I've lost that weight, gained weight, lost beast. weight. Yeah. But it's just, I, it's so, that's so tight. Yeah. And they put modifications to the restraint, too, because, again, that was, that was uh, you know, Six Flags New, uh, New England is where that death happened. Right. So all the Six Flags parks were like, oh, no, no. And they, they all they, worried. Yeah, they, they, they went overboard with, uh, you know, clamping down the restraint. So it's, it's right. difficult, especially for a tall person. Well, tall and big, you know. When, <laughs> once you get into that, it's impossible, you know. I went to th- – th- this, is, this, is, this is heartbreaking. So okay. I'm going to Disney next week. You okay. know? It's part of my vacation. It's That's a working awesome. vacation. I, I'm going to uh, IAPA, which is the uh, – uh, trade show for amusement parks. Okay, and that's where you know B and M's going to be, and Inman, and you go right. and you buy roller coasters. And I'm going for work here uh, for right. Funland, but uh, I also go down to have fun. And I've yeah. been going to Iapa. I've only worked here for three years, and right. I've been a fan of the industry for so many. But I've been going to Iapa probably for 15 years now. No kidding. On my own, and now I get paid to go, so it's great. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah. But uh, so I'm going to Disney, and I was yeah. like, oh well, me and Sherry, my wife, we got to get we got to get. Disney shirts. Sure. You got to Disney it up. And she hates Disney, by the way. She loves <laughs> Universal. She, uh, Universal we, we, is nice. She found a T-shirt at Kohl's that said, I'd rather be at Hogwarts. And she goes, I'm wearing this to Disney. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> you cannot wear that to Disney because they're, they're going to they're gonna kill you. No, but uh, she, uh, she was like, oh, they got some great Disney Christmas shirts here. And I'm like, oh, that's it. We're going to a Christmas Disney party. Yeah. I'm going to get a Christmas Disney shirt. And I get there and I'm like, uh, double XL, double XL. There's nothing that's going to fit me. And so I'm going through and they're like, nothing at Kohl's. And I'm like, okay. 
okay, well, let's go to the Fat Boy store. Let's go to Walmart. They yeah. got something for me there. I don't have any graphic tees anymore. They, they got, got rid of all basketball them, huh? shorts and flannel. And I'm like, what, that? I mean, what, what am I supposed to do with that? So I go to, I'm like, okay, that'd be, let's that'd go to Target. That'd be a hell of a 90s mixtape, yeah, flannel and basketball, <laughs> and basketball shorts, right? shorts. I'm like, <laughs> uh, the girls section is half of Walmart. Yeah. And then the guys section now is just basketball shorts and flannel. Like, that's all you get. Uh, and so then I go, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to Target. You know, yeah. uh, let's, you know, it's the expensive Walmart. <laughs> yeah. And I get there and they don't do triple XL. So okay. I'm like, where am I supposed to buy clothes now? I'm just yeah. I'm gonna wear a potato sack or a you know a, what a pillowcase or something I don't know but yeah uh, so I'm I'm kind of bummed about that but you know that's again you, you get frustrated about that you know I'm, yeah, I'm walking I around you. going I can't even buy a shirt you know because it's you know it, by the way cheap plug hardworkalwayswins.com we go up to 4x ladies and yeah, gentlemen yeah right <laughs> we take care of, we take care of everybody I know the struggle and I try to this is my clothing company by yeah, the way I know and so uh-huh. you go to Go to hardworkalwayswins.com, use the code Gary's Podcast, 10% off. Cheap plug. We're going to sneak it in there just yeah. a little bit. You know, you're a radio guy. You get that, I right? Get, I get you it. I get it. We'll talk about Funland coming up. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Damn right. You know you know what's going to hit me with that. That's a smooth That's smooth right there. If we can get really nerdy, though, what I want you to think hard about this. What is the best roller coaster in the world, and why is it Fury 325? <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you went right to it. I, I, you know, my, my favorite coaster f- since 2000 has been Millennium Force. Okay. And Never been I on haven't, it. I haven't been on Millennium Force in four or five years because of my weight. Yeah. And uh, But Fury... Yeah, Fury, I can get on, and Those, it is B&M, amazing. B and M, okay, yep. yeah, they're they're very they're very, very generous. Yeah, they're generous. So if you can get on like Apollo's chariot, yeah, you, you can get on Fury. Oh, so hell yeah. You, yeah, so but uh, it is just it's so smooth, and there's this crazy transition. I know you, nobody else can see this but us. Yes, but it does this thing where it it goes up. And it goes like sideways oh, as it's yeah. going down, like sideways, sideways. So it's just you get these crazy lateral G's. And then towards the end, where you go through like this little corner, you look like you're about to just ding the post. Yeah. Oh, you were you're oh, trying to reach God. out and touch it. Yeah. It's just like my hands is right there. <sighs> what do we ride that like five or six times while we're there? Oh yeah. And, and the funny yeah. thing is, is you know I love I love Carowinds, yeah. uh, but really besides that, Intimidator and maybe. Maybe Afterburn. Yeah. There's nothing else that's really good. Like yes. All, of, all the rest of the coasters are terrible. Dude, we were saying that. We were there. We're like, this is like a half a day park. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You can we'll boom, go boom, here boom. for half of the day. Go and over go to, to Top Golf. Oh, <laughs> well, we went to Top Golf. Yeah. So we we're like, oh, let's do this. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my wife, I brought down there for the first time last year. Right. And uh, and I already knew. I mean, I've been to Carowind, so yeah. I know what's going on. And I was like, "Oh, let's do this." She's like, "Oh, Fury is all right." You know, if she, if you hype it up too much, she doesn't like it. So uh, that's she why she doesn't like Disney because no yeah. Disney's been hyped in her mind, you know, since she was four. Sure. So, uh, uh, but uh, so she she liked it, but it wasn't you know spectacular. Right. And we did Intimidator. And she's like, "Oh, that's better than King's Minions Intimidator." I'm like, Pff, you know. And uh, <laughs> then and then we're like, "Oh, well, let's go on this one." I'm like, I walk up and I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna I got oh, I'm not gonna fit on this one. You just go ahead and ride." It, which yeah. is not necessarily the case because uh, <laughs> I don't want to ride it. It's just an awful coaster. And she would come off and go, "That was terrible." And I was like, "Oh, Wait, I'm sorry. which one was it? Was this the flyer? Uh, the f- well, yeah, that the flyer. Terrible. Oh yeah, I didn't ride that. I didn't <laughs> that ride one. That I was like, I got to go sit in the air conditioning. Yeah, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, and it's always like 100 degrees there too, which is the other There's crazy not a lot part. Of shading. Yeah, I mean and, there and, is, but it's just still it's miserably hot. And by the way, like five people listening to this are actually going to get this. They don't have a zebra to pet. To oh, take a picture with the zebra, the prison <laughs> pony. What, okay, what, where are you at with that? By the what, way, what site are you getting that from? Uh, I, I'm I'm in some group on Facebook. All right, is it season pass holders? Probably. Okay, yeah, I started season pass holders. Oh, you many started years ago. that? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. My wife is still the one who runs it. So, this is crazy. Uh, uh, Sherry and, and Nikki. Okay, are the ones who run it? But uh, yeah. Uh, I think it was w- uh, William uh, who William started the Cauldron, prison pony. Yeah. yeah, started the prison pony thing and just taking pictures. Of it. So we started taking pictures with it. And you know, th- it's funny because this is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> uh, many many years ago, I you, I don't know if you know this or not, but Kings Dominion has a moon tree. Do you know what a moon tree is? No, not a clue. It's a tree that has been to space. The okay. seeds were carried up into space by an Apollo mission uh-huh. and went to the moon. And then they came back, and then they just gave out all the seedlings to places and planted them. I mean, King Sabine had two moon trees, but one fell over in a storm. Yeah. So they still have one. And we used to, like, it was a big thing to take your picture with a moon tree because nobody knew. Where the hell is this damn thing? Exactly. Nobody knew about it. So it's like, oh, you take a picture. And nobody knew why are these people taking a picture with that tree? Yeah. Like, everybody's hugging it and doing all these poses with it. And so that was the, that was the first prison pony, I guess. That was, yeah. you know. 
seven, eight years ago, nine years ago. Yeah. And now they actually have a marker in front of it. So if you actually do oh, walk by. Oh, they tell by, you, like, you'll, here's you'll where it, it is. Yeah. yeah. But I think they put the marker there because of us. We were taking pictures with it. Nobody <laughs> knew what the moon tree was. So I wonder but, if they've uh, caught on to the zebra thing yet. Uh, I told them, like, I'm good friends with a lot of people who work, uh, you know, in management and all oh, that okay. stuff. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told them, I, like, you guys have to move the zebra around. You just have to start moving it around and yeah. messing with people. Because it's like an underground phenomenon, you know, just oh, are you move it to another me? part of the park or just make it disappear for a week and then bring it back and just just mess with people. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Dude, in June, I was there for the run and ride or r- race and ride, yeah, whatever the yeah. hell they call the, it. The 5K. And I stopped in the middle of 5K to take a selfie <laughs> with a <the> zebra. <laughs> I like think just put it on top of the Eiffel Tower one day and just, yeah, you know, just, just move see what it happens. Yeah, just move it around. I think I think I think I might have creeped William out though because I was like, dude, like uh, I've seen him so many times with that damn zebra. I'm like, can we just like meet up and take a picture with the zebra? Yeah, okay. And he, he obliged, but yeah. like I, I was like, I was like, he probably thinks I'm like a real creep right now. <laughs> you, you, well, you never know. You know, yeah. the, the coaster community is an odd community. So, uh, yeah. but no, we, we I love it. We had a lot of fun. So yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, prison pony, the prison pony. <laughs> How about the uh, Twisted Timbers? Where are you at with that? I mean, is that, that's Whew. pretty amazing, huh? It's it's crazy. Did you go on it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I think it, it hurts. It hurts, and it, I feel like I'm going to fall out of it every single time yeah, I get on it. Yeah, I mean, it, but it, I love it. Is that is that the, is that the idea? Is that what they're going for? Or is it just I think because so. we're big guys? Well, and, here, and that's the thing. I think it's because we're big. Yeah. You know, if you think about it, okay, so all it's a lap bar. So all you yeah. have is a lap bar keeping you in. Yeah. And you're doing these weird, crazy barrel rolls, and you're, all that weight is just being forced out of the seat. So my wife, who's like 90 pounds, right. it doesn't hurt her. That's only 90 pounds. But 300 pounds trying to pull you out, Oh yeah, it's a lot on your legs. A lot of force, And yeah. so uh, I think it's because, you know, just the, the bigness. So, you know, that's always the thing. Like, I'm like, well, maybe it'll feel better if I lose more weight. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I won't have all of that, you know. I got a trolley horse on that ride one time. Oh, my. And you can't. There's nothing you can do about that. You ain't going you gotta nowhere. Wait. You just got to calm yourself. Do, do some, uh, like, Lamaze breathing yeah. or something to get I'm like, that. I'm like, I don't know. Do I want to fall out of this ride right now? That might stop <laughs> that my might trolley stop horse. That might stop the trolley horse. Might, they're going to be picking me up with a spatula. <laughs> get rid of the that hiccups point. that way. <laughs> but no, it's 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 an amazing ride. I mean, I I I love the hurl. I don't care how rough it is. Forever, uh, I loved I it because not. when I first went to Kings Dominion, I, I probably went as a kid. I'm fairly certain of it, mm-hmm. like in the '80s. But in '94, a classmate of mine, I was in the sixth grade. We had just got out of the sixth grade, and he took me down there. It was like my first time that I went down there and remembered it. Mm-hmm. And that was when Wayne's World was Paramount. Oh, yeah, of course. A lot of people don't like the Paramount era. I like it because it's rose-covered glasses. That's when I Klingons went. and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Days of Thunder. Uh-huh. As yeah. simplistic as that ride was. I love... I have a poster of Days of Thunder in my office at work. Wow. That's how much I love that movie. But um, the Hurler, man, I, I always had like this special affection for it because... It was the first roller coaster that I've ever been on. The first first? The absolute first. Because I was that terrified one? of them. Yeah. Usually you kind of start small and work your way up. That's no, a big coaster. No, I went coaster. right for that. Code. That was the wow. first one ever. I told them I would not get on Anaconda because it went upside down. That was like two or three years later. That's what everybody says when they're that. seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that goes upside down. I can't do But that. the hurler was fair game, man. And, and when they tore it down, I was a little heartbroken. And I knew it was rough and all that well, stuff. Well, it's not tore down. It's there. Yeah. It's just there's but another I mean, coaster yeah, on with, top yeah, of when it. Yeah, when they made it a little taller. Taller and, and all that stuff. I mean, I think that's stuff. a great way to say goodbye to a coaster like that, though. Yeah. I mean, it's still there. I yeah. mean, the basic layout of it is And you go to happening. Carowinds and ride the OG right yeah. there. Yeah, and there's another park, too. I want to say Kentucky Kingdom up, and they have one that's oh, the okay. same layout, too. Yeah. Uh, I think it's reversed, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, I've been out of the amusement nerdy industry for too long. I've been working here <laughs> and don't keep track of all this stuff. But yeah. uh, um, there was the, my first coaster was like a wood coaster in Minnesota. It was a big, yeah, it was bigger than uh, the Scooby Doo coaster. Yeah. Uh, but uh, not as big as Rebel Yell. A little smaller than Rebel Yell. I think it was 90 feet tall. That was my first one. Sure. I don't remember anything about it other than I remember, like, I was sitting on it and my mom was off to the side. We waved at her. That's all I remember about it. Right. But uh, I definitely remember saying, oh, no, it goes upside down. We can't do that. You know, or, or you know, my mom won't let me do that. Yeah. You know, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but there was one time my, my grade school or uh, middle school was was le- leaving Valley Fair in Minnesota, 
and they had a rip cord. You know what that is? A sky coaster. No. Nah. It's like the uh, King's Dominion has one. It's a big arch, and they pull you up to the top of it. Three, two, one, fly, and you pull the cord and you fall. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they had one that's two hundred feet in Minnesota. This was ninety five, ninety four. Terrified to do that, by the way. But yeah. Oh, it's like you looked at, as a kid. You're like, there's no way. But I was like, oh, being all cocky, like, yeah. oh, I would ride it, but we got to get on the bus. You know, it's, yeah. you got to be on the bus <laughs> now. So, and my math teacher said, you would ride that, and I said, well, yeah, but we got to get on the bus. I would so do it. I got yeah. my money right here. Let's do it, but I can't. We got to get on the bus. And he's like, I drove myself here, so we could go do it. And if we miss the bus, I still give you a ride back. Uh, and now I'm locked in. Called like, you out uh, on your yeah. bullshit. So <laughs> I did it because I was like, well, I'm not going to show my true colors. And yeah. I was almost crying when we were going up. No but kidding. it was the best best ride of my life. Like I do it every time I can anywhere I can go that's cheap enough. I'll do it. Oh man, I love it. But, I, uh, I need. And to... I didn't miss the bus. I know you that's didn't an, miss the bus. It's an yeah. important part of the that's story. The I didn't miss the right bus. There. I, I got to tell you, I, I thought I was going to do it this past summer. I didn't make it on there. But maybe 2019. I'm and and I you know what? It's, it. it's good for big people because it's, it? there's not really a weight limit. There's a weight limit for all three of you. Yeah. But, I mean, even you and two other decent-sized people are going to make it. It's like, I think it's like 800 pounds or something no like kidding. that. No kidding. So, like, for instance, thousand. you and I... We could be paired up on. Oh it. yeah, and the the heavier you make it, yeah, the more you're gonna soar on the other side. So mm. it's a good ride. I'll I meet got, you down there. I got yeah, I got my I got my uh, wheels turning. Maybe <laughs> maybe we should. Uh, I don't know. I, I need somebody up. to toughen me up and yeah. take me over there. And <laughs> so I heard you want to do skydiving. You haven't done that. I haven't done that yet because I there's a weight limit to that. I the think tandem. it's around two fifty. Yep. I well back when I moved here it was two twenty five. Oh, I skydived well, twice. Even lower, yeah. But now I think it is around the two fifty mark. The tandem. You could you if you wanted to learn how to skydive and jump by yourself yeah. for the first time, you could do that. But it's yeah. you know oh, God, I, would I die. feel like crazy <laughs> dangerous and yeah. crazy expensive. So. Uh, but yeah, to do that tandem flight, the uh, cheap one, uh, it's you know you got to get down that two fifty mark, which you know it kills me. Like I okay, so I went uh, on a cruise. I do cruises a lot, which are really terrible for never, people. I've like never me. done those. Before. All it is, it's just a floating buffet, and it's <laughs> and it's good food too. It's not amusement yeah. park food. Yeah. It's delicious Decent food, food yeah. and it's free. And you know my thought process is well, if it's free, you got to eat as much of it as you can. Well, of course you yeah. got to get the money's worth, oh, right? That's the terrible. idea. It, Royal Caribbean is it's the only cruise line I do, and I do it you know once a year or so. They have like a fancy dinner every night where you know everybody sits around, and tells their stories from the day. Oh, what did you do? Oh, we went yeah. to do this and that, and you talk about all the stuff you did. And uh, and we when, when you sit there, the first time I went, I was like, oh, prime rib, yeah, or I could have a lobster tail. I, I don't know which one I want. And the guy goes, you can have both. I'm like, really? And he goes, you can order whatever. We'll bring out whatever you ask for. And I said, yeah. well, I want two prime rib and a, and a lobster tail. So they brought out three meals. Like that, just Christ. two pieces of prime rib and a lobster tail. Whatever the meal was, they just brought all they three of them out. right out there, so yeah. I, you know, you look like an idiot with three plates in front of you, but you had two pieces of prime rib and a lobster tail. That's so. strong. I mean, yeah, that's I strong right there. But, uh, but the story I was getting at is... Uh, I, I lost again. It was going on this kick. I need to lose weight. Need to lose weight. Yeah. We went uh, on our honeymoon to uh, uh, Lebedee, Haiti, on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, and they have this huge zip line that goes no over like a bay, and uh, it's just amazing. Well, like right off the ship. Into uh, no, a bay? no, it's it's you get off in oh, Lebedee, off, Haiti. Okay, yeah, 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 you're off the ship, and yeah. it's like a, a, a private resort that they own. Right. So only Royal Caribbean guests get to go to it, and they have this huge zip line. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, I'm doing that." You know, I'm paying yeah. for it, so I paid for both of us on the ship. So we had a reserve time, and yep. and we get up there, and they were like, "Oh, two seventy five. Well, they're not going to weigh us. Yeah, sure enough, they weighed us, and they're oh. like, "You're two seventy seven. And I'm like, "Oh, come on! Yeah, I could, I could nail this out right now. Let me do some push ups or something. Yeah. I got this." And no, and it, I didn't do it. So now my wife has to go do it because we do a video podcast, sure, uh, a video YouTube page. So I had to strap GoPros on her and show her how to hit record on the GoPro oh, so, wow. so we could get the footage of it. And uh, I sat at the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> this is before the days where you could just talk to the GoPro. Start exactly. Recording. Yeah. Start recording. Yeah. That's not, that's not the way that works. So, uh, but she went in and did it. And she was a trooper. She did not want to do it by herself. Right. But she did. And uh, and uh, we got some great video of it. Uh, we got to put it up on her YouTube page. So, I'll have but to go you know, seek it's just that, a, out. That, that that stuff kills me though. You know, it's yeah. like. It's it, two seventy five is always zip lining. That's yeah. you know you got to be down to two seventy five to do that. Sure. And I'm I'm a tall guy, six three, so you know it's a little harder, I guess, to get down to two seventy five. But again, sure. I was at two twenty five, so I should be able to do it. And uh, you know the two fifty mark for skydiving, I would love to go skydiving again. Oh my so, god, yeah, I um, want to go for the first time. I mean, I'm just I look at it with this journey that I've been on. It challenges me to 
want to do new things, get out of my comfort zone. Like before this, we wouldn't be sitting here. And I, you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't approach strangers and say, "Hey, want to do a podcast?" It doesn't work <laughs> that way. But what happens is, you you get these new ideas in your mind. You want to challenge yourself. You mm-hmm. want to try new things. So skydiving is something that I swore up and now I told him a thousand times, "I'm never doing this. Like I will never, ever, ever do this." And then last year, I'm like, I really want to do this. But I just I didn't get it down in time. And the way I look at it, the way I approach weight loss is like there's no hurry on this. So many people are in a damn hurry. Mm -hmm. This is not a class assignment. that's due in two weeks. This is your life. Yeah. And you got to take it one day at a time. And so I understand that. Yes, I set a goal. And while I smashed four out of the five goals I set last year, this is going to be for the rest of my life. So if it takes me two more years, so be it. Mm -hmm. But I will get there at some point. And that I just try to keep that perspective. So I, w- I want to do it. I really I'm excited to do it. But I think this uh, extreme sky flyer perhaps might be the kind Good of a, transition. A, yeah. The first like foray <laughs> into that. And then maybe mm-hmm. uh, like what is that? The I fly or something. I know it's not even close to it, but it's similar. Maybe. I did. I did that. Uh, something similar to that. It's like it was an outdoor skydiving thing. Okay. It's a machine outside. And yeah. uh, and again, it's you had to be 275. And I'm like, mm, I'm like. Two uh, maybe two eighty, and they're yeah. like, "You'll be fine." I'm like, "Maybe two eighty five." They're yeah. like, "You're fine," and you're more than two eighty five. And I'm like, "Okay, we're good though." And they're yeah. like, "You're fine." I'm like, "Okay," and uh, and they took you know you got to get the suit on yep. and the helmet and the goggles and the earbuds and all that stuff, and and they're doing like crazy flips and stuff. And then they just yeah. grab you and kind of coax you through it, so you just you know stay rigid in your sure. in your formation, looking straight down at a fan that's gonna tear your head off and uh, <laughs> and uh, and they hold you in place and yeah. uh it was great i, I loved it and uh and a friend of mine mckinsey she did it with me and she's skinny you know college girl she yeah. no problem she's flying up and doing all that stuff and uh, they're like well yeah for her the fan was at like 65 percent yeah i was like well you said it now you got to say what it was for me and they go it was it was at 95 to 100 <laughs> i was like of course yeah the secret of those yeah. things you got to go like early in the morning as far as like weight yeah, I remember when I used to weigh myself. I would weigh myself first thing in the morning. I hadn't eaten or drinking yep. a damn thing. Yep. Like I want to see what is the lowest. Mm-hmm. Like you'd work out the night before, and you wake up the next morning because sleep knocks off a little bit. Yeah. I don't know how that works. I'm not a scientist or a doctor no. or any of this stuff, but you wake up that next morning. You haven't eaten or drinking nothing. And you go straight to it. And yep. Every morning, that's what I still do. Trampoline right. parks are awesome for cardio. By oh the way, oh my god, it kills you're a me. fun guy. You got a hat we, that spins we, with a wheel. We you got like to go we got a w- sky zone right across the street, and we traded out our Christmas party last year. So. So Funland got to go over there, and they came over here. No kidding. And uh, and first of all, I work with sixteen year olds, so they yeah. they they're over there jumping for like six hours, and yeah. I fell into the foam pit, and I can't even get out of the foam pit because I'm like, oh no, I'm drowning in foam, you know? You can't. Yeah, I didn't even know they had that over <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, it's right across the street. Yeah, no kidding. And we got a Chuck E. Cheese and the Sky Zone right across the street. No, is that close to where the go karts used to be? Uh, yep. Uh, now it's a uh, Life Point Church, but yeah, okay. it's all in that kind of general area there. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I remember uh, the last time I did. Uh, trampoline I burned like a thousand active calories in an hour <laughs> it's crazy dude I see now I, you're a planet fitness guy right yeah, oh, yeah yeah my wife does that too and uh, I, I hate working out like there's nothing that I hate more but if I can what, what do is it about that you don't like uh, just well the feeling is it like uh, mundane the mundane port like, of okay. like I try to listen to stuff or watch stuff and it's just yeah. like I feel like one, my body's going to just fall apart, and then two, sure. it's like I can't concentrate on whatever else is going to keep me from being bored. Sure, because I of, get it. you know breathing or whatever is going on. But if I do something fun like uh, racquetball, yeah, you know, or frisbee, you something know, that keeps I can you do that. Yeah, I'll go play tune, yeah. disc golf, you know, or something like that. I love that. Yeah, uh, you know, that kind of stuff I can enjoy. If I was, you know, biking around the neighborhood. Sure. If yeah. I had to run around the yep. neighborhood, nope. <laughs> so, you know, I don't I don't know where the line is, but you know, certain things I find more entertaining than others and I'd rather do that. But Yeah, I think it's just you find something that you like and you and you double and triple down on it, I think. That's really like for me, I start on the treadmill. I know that that gets boring, but like mm-hmm. I get lost in YouTube videos and yeah. that's where my mind just I get lost in a video, the next thing I know an hour has gone by. I'm like, "Whoa!" That would not happen to me on the treadmill. I'd be like, three minutes? Oh, man, I feel like I watched, like, seven cat videos. <laughs> <laughs> but when I started, I was just walking. Like, I wasn't yeah. even I wasn't even running. Um, and this is what I tell people all the time. Like, they want to get started. I say, you don't have to go, don't go in there and be ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's... Start slow. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a week or two before I even increased the speed at all. Or if you want to go slow, hit up the incline a little bit. And that's the trick where you can kind of trick your mind to do more. And... Um, 
that's what worked better rather than because every other time that I tried it was always, uh, you know, oh, you have to do it this way. Yep. Or you have to do it that well, way. Well, no, I don't, I don't have to do it anyway. I do thing, it my way. The thing that I hate about any weight loss is yeah. when you start talking about weight loss, yes. then everybody has an opinion. Oh, of course. And that yeah, drives yeah. me crazy. You know, it, everybody everybody's going to have something that's going to work for them differently. Of course. People are going to commit to things differently than, than uh, you know, other people. Like, some people are going to want to be 100% or nothing. You yeah. know, they, they're going to eat only vegetables yep. for a month, you know. And then other people are going to, you know, they're going to have their own different ways into it. And, uh, and you know, obviously when you do all these different diets, you go on yeah. for a couple weeks and you get off. And the one that I, I think works best for me is just counting calories. Just, yeah. You know, okay, well, maybe I'm not going to eat Portion you know, a six-foot sub from Subway today. I'll just go and eat a foot long or yeah. a six-inch or a wrap, you know. And uh, and you know it, it's been great because my my wife has been making me lunch. Yeah. Which if it's there, I'm gonna eat it, and then I'm not gonna go out right. uh, for lunch wherever around here, Chick Fil A or whatever. So that's actually been helping because yeah, one sandwich and a little bag of chips is portion control. Of course. But it, you know my mind sees oh I'm gonna eat lunch and I just whip out my little lunch box and eat my lunch. So yeah. Um. And I'm glad you said that about all the different diets and and different uh, weight loss and all that stuff. That's where I feel like I come in and I try to talk to people because I operate on four pillars. Mm-hmm. Patience, consistency, hard work, and love yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you got those four things, you can do anything. And that doesn't just apply to weight loss. That applies to everything. And I feel like that is universal. Like mm-hmm. it's non-negotiable to me. If you have those four things, you can achieve anything. You can run a business. You can lose weight. You can take over the world if you mm-hmm. got the four pillars. And And – you know, where all these different diets and weight loss programs differ, these four things stay the same. Because if you're patient and you're consistent and you work hard and you believe in yourself, if you love yourself, man, you can take over the world. That's right. I really believe that. And so that's what I think gets lost. There's a lot of fad diets, especially like on Instagram. That's where I hang out mostly full time mm-hmm. is Instagram. And, you know, God bless them. They have their things they want to try, and that's fine. I understand it. But mm-hmm. I just try to tell people, no matter what you do, like, I want you to go and do you what you feel. You research this. You want to try this. Yeah. Great. But try to operate on these four pillars. If you have these, anything you get on is going to be successful. And that's how I truly believe. And, and the advice for the people watching people diet is just cheer them on. Yeah. Don't don't. Try to give them the advice, unless they're asking for advice. Yeah, give them the advice. But if they're just saying, "Hey, I'm down three pounds. I'm counting calories and do that," and you don't go in there and say, "Oh, well, no, you got it. You should be doing this," or "You should be doing that." I hate that. I hate crazy. (laughs) Drives me crazy. I I tell my wife, "I'm getting ready to do a weight loss post. Watch how many uh, uh, advice posts get uh, in the next ten minutes." Oh, it happens. Yeah, Yeah. you're right. You're right. The moment you post anything specific, people will jump in there. And I mean, I get it. They they mean well. It works. It works. Yeah, it definitely they mean well. That's for sure. And it, it, so again, everything. Things going to work different for everybody. I, I, you know, I people, just, some people need way more structure right. in their diet, and some people are just going to just count calories, you know, and, and and try to take it a day at a time. I just get off on watching other people win. That's how I look at it. Oh, you yeah. know, people, other people are successful. I love it. Mm-hmm. I can't get enough of that. In fact, I mean, that is quite the opposite of the person that I was even five, six years ago. But now it's like I want to see everybody win. I want to see everybody succeed. So. I'm with you, man. I like exactly what you said. You go out there and you root them on. You don't try to critique it. If they want to ask you your opinion, give them your take. Cool, but just cheer them on. Yeah, I love that. Yep. I love that you said that. Yep. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about this fun land. We're hanging out in the fun land. We're in the we're in a what do you say? This well, was this a party is, room. Well, it's a conference room. A this conference is a little room. fancier than our party rooms. Ah. We got TVs and tablecloths and yes. stuff like that. But uh, curtains. Yes. Uh, well, the curtain is divided. We got another same. Same thing, mirror image yes. on the other side, but uh, set up for employee orientation. Probably good so. for audio because it bounces off. Yeah, well, I don't know if you're they quite can, the visionary. Yeah, there. If, they can't, if they can't like hear that. already, but we got the loud music. It's Friday night. Yeah, here. I hope there's so not like a loud DCMA music copyright and, uh, strike against yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps flagging. That's really it. nerdy, by yeah. the way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, so we got our, you know, we got our uh, Funland uh, crew out there doing yeah. games with the kids and stuff. So you hear them talking all the time, and Bill Carroll's up there DJing and stuff. But so uh, someone, if someone's never been to Funland. Now, first of all, is this a chain or is this just... Well, this is this is the only one. The so, only, okay, yep, so for somebody that's furniture. listening, let's paint the picture. You're in radio. Let's well, paint the picture. What I think we should do first, okay. is there? can let's we pause the podcast? Are we allowed to do that? Sure. So what if me and you pause and we go through real quick and we, we play some stuff and then we come back and talk about it? You want to do that? Yeah. You got some time? We could do that, yeah. I got, got all the time in the world. All right, let's do that. Let me hit pause. 
So Funland. Yeah. Now we can talk about Funland, right? Wow. People people in the podcast, it's like instantaneous. <laughs> and now we were, we're back. It, yeah, it was it, the people had never known that we were gone for an hour. <laughs> they would they would never they would have never guessed it in a million years, Clint. So Funland, I, I'm gonna try to explain this now to people. So it's this Gigantic. How big is it? First of all, it's square okay, foot. Okay, so it's uh, forty thousand square feet okay. inside, but we have uh, sit on seven acres, which includes the parking lot, the building, and the outside attractions. Yeah, and uh, it's it's labeled as a FEC or Family Entertainment Center, which is you know Chuck E. Cheese, Dave and yeah. Buster's. Uh, we're kind of in between all that. You know, Dave and Buster's is an arcade that may have an attraction here or there, but most of them are just arcade games. Yep. Uh, we have eighteen rides and attractions, so yeah. inside and out, go karts, mini golf, batting cages. Uh, we just rode our roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, we got rock climbing walls. We've got yeah. uh, virtual reality, bowling, laser tag. So it's it's a little bit of everything. And so right. when you know family come when a family comes here, grandma and grandpa can do something with the kids. Everybody's Kid, got something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we uh, we went and hit the uh, I'll say the, the more adult stuff. You know, we sure. did a game of laser tag and some uh, some virtual reality and things. And, and outside. virtual reality is wild, man. Isn't it though? Yeah. I haven't done. The last thing, last VR I've done is like probably like PlayStation VR, which is oh, totally yeah. tame. No, yeah, this is uh, really really cool. It was actually introduced last year, okay, uh, during IAPA, which is the show I'm going to. Right, right, right. And uh, we went down there, and the the thought process was, okay, well, let's talk about the coaster. It all kind of wraps into each other. Yeah. Okay, we're actually going to go back to Clip and Climb, yeah. which is our climbing walls. Uh, where we had paid for them, we knew we were going to put it in. This is like September of last year. Okay, and. Uh, I, I called the owner and I said, okay, I know we're not serious about this coaster. We're never yeah. serious about it. We're <laughs> joking around about it. But if we ever wanted to entertain the idea of the coaster, we have to move Clip and Climb four feet. And he goes, why? And I said, because the coaster won't fit yeah. if we put it where we want it. So we have to move it four feet to have a pathway so the coaster would fit because it's the only place in the building it would fit because everywhere else is beans. Yeah. And that just happens to be a perfect area for it. So uh, he said, all right, move Clip and Climb four feet. I said, okay. So we called the engineers, and we said, we need to move this four feet this way, and they started redesigning and do what they had to do. Sure. The next day, I called the owner, and he said, uh, you know, uh, why don't you just go ahead and call the ride manufacturer and see, get some prices on the coaster. Sure. You know, no, we're not buying it. Yep. Don't get your hopes up. Test the market. We're just, the, we're just, yeah. I just want to see how much it would be, and what, what kind of lead time are we looking at? Yeah. So I call him up, and the manufacturer says, well, we got our IAPA show in November, which is, you know, next yep, week. right around the corner. And, uh, and they said, so by that time, we'll be on a, a year waiting list. Yeah. And I said, okay. And they go, but we got a Germany show this week, and that'll put us on a six-month waiting list. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I went back to the owner, and I said, yeah, 350000 and if we buy it this week, uh, we'll get it in less than six months. And he goes... All right, where do I write my check? <laughs> <laughs> so we went two days. We're not we're never even anticipating a coaster to uh, put a deposit on a coaster. So, and uh, you know, we it, obviously it was you know going to be six months. We knew yeah. uh, Clip and Climb was going in February. Right. It was going to be a June install. Uh, we were hoping a little earlier, but uh, you know, got pushed back a, a little bit. But um, so yeah, the coaster came in, and while we were at the IAPA show, we were saying, okay, well, we'll you know, we're looking at some other stuff. What could we do? Sure. We're, we're talking about, oh, well, let's get an escape room, you know, because that's yeah. the hot thing. Everybody wants an escape room. Yeah, I've never done one of those. Yeah. And so we're like, okay, well, uh, you know, let's look at a few. And we looked at a few. We're like, nah, we don't <laughs> want to do these kind of things. But uh, there was a, a company called Creative Works that does laser tag and, yep. and all this stuff. And so we did there. There, so it was really cool, but it was going to be too labor intensive. We're like, no, nah, yeah. this isn't going to work for us. But we turned around and they had a virtual reality game, and yeah. there's a line like an hour long to play this thing. Right. And we're like, well, what's that? And they're like, oh, it's virtual reality. So they brought us to the front of the line. We get to play it real quick. And yeah. we walked off, and me and, and the other managers were just blown away. And the <laughs> owner says, is it good? And I was like, it's the most incredible VR I've ever seen. And yeah, we've done VR immersive. everywhere. And, um, uh, he said, well, how much is it? And they said, 85000 So he wrote a check, and <laughs> the next thing you know, we got VR coming to the park. So it's that easy, man. Yeah, wow. and well, you know, it's not that easy. I make yeah. it sound way easier <laughs> than it is, but uh, yeah. I mean, Cutting checks over here. And, it, you know, it really was one of these things. I, I'm new to the industry from yeah. the standpoint of working in the industry. Sure. So I've only worked. Fan of the industry. Fan of the industry since yeah. 2000. Talk about that. But uh, working in the industry, I've only worked here for uh, coming up on four years. I've only been yeah. general manager for uh, a little over two. Right. Um, and, you know, it's it's definitely taken uh, 
big steps to get the owner to trust me in sure. the sense that he's going to write a $350,000 check for a roller coaster. So, yeah. uh, you know, now we've got this go-kart project. I was talking to you about that, that uh, yeah. well, $1.2 million, and it's going to be the first multi-level go-kart track in Virginia. That's So crazy. really exciting. They have one out at... Uh, Jolly Rogers uh, in Ocean City, Maryland. Okay. Yeah, big yeah. I haven't been there in multiple years. Multiple level, you know, craziness, but uh, nothing anywhere close to here. So that's the closest. Right. Otherwise, you have to go to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and that's the next place where they have double, you know, right, crazy right. go-karts. So I was going to say on the side of it before I forget, so the VR, we did that. I mentioned the last thing I did was PlayStation VR. <laughs> I think um, there's one game I think you should try if you ever get the opportunity there's like this um, monster thing, but it, like it's based on like a roller coaster car, uh-huh. and so you go through like this haunted house, and you have to like shoot monsters that Ooh. are trying to kill you. But you're on like a roller coaster, a roller coaster car, yeah, and you're going through like, like a fun there's house. dead bodies hanging from the <laughs> ceiling that you have to like duck. You have to actually duck. And oh wow, it's it's all. I think you would dig that. I the name. There's probably like a few people that are probably screaming at the radios right now or their phones. <laughs> like like ah, it's they this. know what it is. I, yeah. I it's I can't even think of it right now, but it's awesome. Uh, we're getting way off topic now, but yeah. have you? Do you have Netflix? Yes. Okay. Have you started watching the uh, what is it? The Haunting of Hill House. I have not. Oh my god. Okay. So this, first of all, it's an amazing show. Yeah. Uh, if you like horror movies, you'll love it. You know, yeah. but it's it's a really good show, and they do some crazy, twisted plot points. I can't even. Uh, there's a show that it's similar to, and I can't think of what it is. Right. But uh, oh, somebody said it was "This Is Us," but a haunted version of "This Is Us." <laughs> but I don't. I'm, I didn't see "This Is Us," yeah. so I can't say. But Never hey, seen it. So much way like they go in the future, in the past, and the future, in the past, and it all sure. ties together sure. really, really well. Anyways, in in one of the scenes, the kid is playing a Sega CD. Do you oh remember my that? Oh God, Sewer Shark. Sewer Mike Shark. Tra- that's yeah. what he was playing, and I was sewer like, Oh shark. my God, he's playing Sewer Shark. <laughs> oh, I loved that game. Oh, my I loved God. it. I would. I used to have. A chair that kind of moved around, and I try to move just around move like a, around like a D box. You ever oh, do yeah, the yeah. D box movies? Yep, yep, yeah, yep. dude. And, and it was okay. So I always thought the guy looked like Danny DeVito. It wasn't Danny DeVito in that, was it? No, I. I, I this guy's been in a thousand movies. I couldn't. Yeah. If you had a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you his name. But <laughs> but I know so exactly. What, what you're internet movie about. databases for yeah. We had a good producer over here. He'd be uh, googling it right now. I know right? he'd be he'd be looking it up. But <laughs> no, that that game. I and that goes back to where I was talking about how I love Days of Thunder, the moving seats. Yeah. I always and go see, back to that. You loved Days of Thunder because you're a King's Dominion fan, and yeah. King's Dominion people who are with King's Dominion, uh, you know, through Paramount Days of Thunder, they love Days of Thunder. Yeah, I, I grew up with the Mall of America, and we had Days of Thunder, and I hated it. Really? I was like this is a stupid. They had ride. it in the mall. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, we they have, there's an amusement park in the mall. Yeah, and yeah. There's a mystery mine ride in the mall that had that ride. Now it's where. Uh, uh, the SpongeBob coaster is because they okay. tore it down. Yeah, but uh, there was a Space Cowboys one that I really liked. <laughs> it was kind of like Sewer Shark. Now that I think oh, about it, man. but uh, yeah, that was the one I really liked. But they had it would switch off, so you'd get Days of Thunder or Sewer or not Sewer Shark, uh, Co- uh, Space Cowboys. Space Cowboys. They'd go yeah. back and forth, and so I'd get so upset right. if it was Days of Thunder because I always wanted the. Was other it the one. same Days of Thunder as Kings of Dominion? Yeah, probably, same thing. Were you around at that time, Kings of Dominion? Not here. I moved okay. here in 2003. So oh, yeah, uh, it was probably SpongeBob. Oh, that point. Yeah, because yeah. it was James Bond afterwards. Yeah, the fact that I and I didn't like that one either. Mind. And they actually Kings Dominion brought that back for like two weeks. Did they really? one summer just for fun? Because they, they should had have the brought film. back Days of Thunder. They still got the damn checkerboard Days numbers of on the Thunder, doors. If you if you want to get crazy, yeah. if you go to Kings Dominion's Halloween Haunt, okay, and you go through the Zombie High uh, Haunted House, yes, the film strip that they have dangling from the ceiling. In one of the rooms in the uh, in the classrooms that you go through, it's the film room. It's the Days of Thunder film strip. <laughs> okay, I think enough people have pulled it from the wall to take home as souvenirs because they found out what it was. This but, is uh, really yeah. this is really nerdy because like I think of like Universal Studios Back to the Future the ride. Oh, God, and I, I love that they put the movie on like one of the DVDs. Yes, uh-huh. but nobody, I'm sure nobody's got like a VHS no. of Days of Thunder, so yeah. that kills me. Yeah, it's out there somewhere. Somebody has to Somebody, have it, but, but they just haven't put it on YouTube. Exactly. Yet. That's where we what I love it. about Universal. Yeah, and this is so we're getting way off topic. Of I don't course, even know what we're yeah. talking about, but that's the beauty uh, of the podcast. Uh, the Simpsons ride. Have yeah. you been on the Simpsons oh, yeah. ride? Yep. Okay. Have you seen all the tie-ins that they do to the Back to the Future ride through the Simpsons Never ride? Never picked up on it. Okay, so if you stand in the queue line long enough, there's yeah. a video that's they're showing you of the of you know whatever you're getting on Sideshow Bob taking over the ride kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you have to stand in the hour long line, you get the full story. And Doc Brown <laughs> sells. Christopher Lloyd plays his voice. Sells. 
his ride to Krusty Land or sells oh his God. park to Krusty Land. And so he's tied into it a little bit by him saying, oh, it's your ride now, you know, leaving or whatever. And now is it like is, Doc Brown Simpson's guy? Or yes, is it like, Doc okay. Brown Simpson, you know, nice. and, and uh, doing it's not, the It's not live style. action to Cart 2. No, okay, no, yeah. no. And, uh, and so he, you know, sells it to, or gives the keys to Krusty the Clown and he, you know, does whatever, Krusty Land or whatever. I wonder if that video is out there yeah. somewhere. Oh, it's, it has to be. It well, I mean, it's probably be. still active, that video. Yeah, and probably. I know I know we have the ride video of the Simpsons on our YouTube page because it was a press release years ago. No kidding. And we put it up, and it's one of our highest grossing videos. You know, it's no way kidding. up there. But uh, the ride itself, if you're a big amusement park geek, yeah, uh, the Simpsons ride actually has a lot of tie-ins to uh, rides. Some of them that don't even exist anymore. Like, uh, did you ever Bush Gardens? Did you ever go when they had? Uh, uh, Corkscrew Hill, probably nope. not. Yeah, it was a while ago. So that movie theater that they have a long time mm-hmm. ago had a, a 3D, uh, not a 3D movie, a uh, motion simulator movie about uh, leprechauns and stuff like oh, okay. that. And yeah. uh, there's parts of that in The Simpsons ride. And there's you know Small World and Pirates of the Caribbean, the obvious right. ones, and Some Water callbacks, World and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But they're making fun of all of those rides. <laughs> and they just happen to make fun of Bush Gardens Williamsburg ride yeah. the year that it closed. So it closed and it's, they're still making fun of it to this day, but it's been gone. I mean, it's been three different things by then, you know, so when are they going to spoof uh, Funland? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They need to get on it though. You know, I'd be honored. No, we, we walked around and I got to tell you, uh, looking at that coaster, I think I told you off the mic, I was like, this coaster, if you didn't see it in motion, if you just saw the car sitting on the track and the layout, it's like a figure eight, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And it's like every beach or a little carnival, little rinky-dink carnival-looking mm-hmm. coaster. That's what you think. Yeah. And then you get on this damn thing. Yeah. And and it starts spinning you around, and the, when it picks up speed going <laughs> over the hump and back around the corner, you're just spinning. Yeah. That so, thing takes the wind out of you in a good way. Well, yeah, and, and and you have to like okay. So if you balance the cars like we did, yeah, uh, we don't spin very much. Yeah. So if you balance it out, but you were off balance because there was one person sitting with you, but they're sitting on the other side of you. Yes. On the same side, so that throws it off, and you were spinning six times more than uh, uh, me yeah. and Andrew were. So yeah. it was, you know, it, I think it's he crazy. prefers not. Yeah, to he spin didn't want to spin. That's why. <laughs> that's why I sat where I did. Otherwise, we would have been crazy spinning. Oh too, my but, god! Yeah, yeah. Call the paramedics. <laughs> and it's funny because you know the first reaction you guys had. You know, we really we went from you know uh, shaking hands for the first time to podcast in ten minutes. Yes. But uh, we were walking back, and you're like, oh, there, there's a roller coaster here. You know, you're, yeah. you were shocked because again, it's indoors. Uh, you, you don't open see that everywhere. No, no, and it's a fairly good size coaster for an indoor coaster. Oh, definitely. So. And you get, what is that, about three minutes, roughly? Yeah, well, it's a four-minute ride. A four-minute. So okay, yeah, uh, yeah. We, you get between nine and ten circuits, depending on, on the weight distribution in the car. Right. So but it's it feels right a lot longer. I mean, it feels yeah. like we're on there for ten minutes. Yeah, it feels like you're like, okay, uh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> you can stop yeah, yeah. now, yeah, that kind of thing. Oh, no, but, yeah. I didn't want it to stop. Yeah. Like, well, and the kids don't either, so yeah. that's why we give them a four-minute ride. So. Is there like a hack where like we could come in in the middle of the night and just run it all night long? So Does that even exist? You, the, well... There is uh, on the control panel. Yes, there is a timer on and timer off, and if you turn the timer off, it's not going to stop until you tell it to stop. Wow! So yes, there is. Do a, a lot hack. of rides have that? Like no, none okay. of our rides have that. It's the only right. ride that has that. So, <laughs> uh, well, no, some of them. Okay, so like, uh, uh, what would it? Is, uh, no, Scrambler has a timer on it. Uh, I'm trying to think which one. Uh, okay, uh, the. Tilt a whirl yes. and the roundup outside, they have a light timer, which means when the light goes off, then the operator is supposed to stop the ride. Right. But if you just let it they ride could they could let it run as long as they want, yeah. it's just gonna keep going. That brings but, me uh, up a time because I God forbid we've gone on enough sidebars here. Why not another one? <laughs> I was at I was at a just a just a terrible carnival in a in a parking lot of a uh, uh, since Springfield uh, shopping center and that that ride where you go in the spaceship and you uh-huh. stick to the wall. Gravitron. Yeah, Gravitron. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what it was. And that that guy, whoever's running that ride, he just <laughs> let it go. And there's there's parents like ready to fight yep. this guy. They're, they're, Kids they, came out that throwing guy up. Probably wants people to throw up. <laughs> yeah. No, there was kids in there and the parents were like screaming and cursing at the guy to yeah. stop the ride. And he had that thing running for about ten minutes. He wouldn't even listen to him. He's just yeah. tuning him out. No, yeah, you got the music going in there and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So Oh my God. That was that was crazy <laughs> to, to think about that. But no, I always wondered about that because I, I always thought of let's take a ride like King Daka or Intimidator mm-hmm. or one of these. Like, I always wondered personally, like how long 
could I stay on? Now, Intimidator, my record in one day is like 25 rides. Oh, wow. That's a good chunk for that ride, too, because yeah. that pulls a lot of Gs. I mean, because at that time, that's all I could ride. Yeah. So I'd say, okay, I'm going to stay here for two hours. I'll grab lunch. I had the meal plan. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll ride it as many times as I can before the lines start building. And this was like April, early May, before they really started getting packed. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, 25 times. And I was wondering, I was like, what if, what, what if I just had the keys to the castle? And they said, you know what? If you want to sit on this ride for eight hours, be our guest. We're going to let it run through the cycle, and you just sit on it and go on. And I wondered, like, how long I could really go. We, uh, uh, I, I used to run a coaster enthusiast club called Coaster Crew. Okay. And uh, we had a charity event called Single Riders. And right. the, the theory behind this event was... Uh, we would fill empty coaster seats for charity. Right. And uh, we'd gain a rareness because we're sitting with people we don't know. You yep. know, And we're, we have our coaster, you know, Give Kids World coaster shirts on and, and uh, single ride. And, and uh, we did it at Kennywood in Pennsylvania. Uh, okay. We did it two years there, and then we did it two years at Kings Dominion. And, uh, and it's just you're, that's what you're doing. You're riding back to back to back because there's wow. always empty seats. Of course. So every you're time. riding every single time. Yeah. You're riding until you're like, I can't do this anymore. I How have to stop. How long did you go? Uh, me, I was on it all day. Like, I, was, I wouldn't get whatever no, ride no big I was deal, on. Right? Yeah, I would just stay on it. But uh, wow. you know, other people, I mean, it's funny too because uh, they'll do film shoots. Like, amusement parks will do film shoots. Yeah. And I remember Bush Gardens uh, and this one. Uh, it was a Griffin. They were opening the Griffin, oh, I love that ride. and they needed uh, they needed actors. So okay, well they hired like a family. This is yeah. the family to represent the park. They're going to be in the front row, and yep. they got to ride. And so they have to ride like fifteen times to get every angle, every shot. Yeah. And every time I would go, they're like, okay, we're going to have a A crew, a B crew, and a C crew. And I was yeah. always like the C crew, just like in the background. Look, there's a roller coaster pointing, yeah. <laughs> you know, because they didn't want this mug on uh, on, yeah. on TV, but. The actors are always the first to go. The ones that are paid. Yeah. Nope. They're like three rides. They're like, I can't do this anymore. And oh. they get the, so then they fill it with coaster enthusiasts because they have to have a full car. You yeah. know, they're getting video and stuff. And, and then, and the, you know, then the cute coaster enthusiasts, I'll say the A group. They, no, they're not going to last as long as the ugly <laughs> ones. So it just it keeps going until, <laughs> until we're there filling seats and getting wide shots because they can't, you know, can't yeah, get close-ups on us, shots. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's always funny. that the, the, the actors never last. The uh, actors uh, intimidate. Uh, media day they yeah. didn't last either you oh know they did they God. did like four or five rides like we can't do this anymore and they're like well we got to get this video stuff this is you know thousands of dollars an hour for this production yeah. crew to be out here give me a free admission i'll be yeah. your photo there guy. you go like, exactly you know, i'll, <laughs> we'll I'll put those faces thing. on yeah we'll sell it you know it, it the first uh two or three years all of the uh, photos I used of Intimidator, I was in, and like the fourth row, right? You know, in there. So like, on, there's a, a vehicle at Kings Dominion that still drives around like the parking lot and stuff, yeah. and the campgrounds. I'm on that uh, on the truck. Like you'd still see me on there, <laughs> and I got a big poster at my house because they had like uh, you know, uh, you know, giant, you know, or not, what was it? Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the grocery stores were sure. selling tickets, and so they had the poster up there. So I've got it framed at my house because I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm on a King's Dominion poster. Why wouldn't you? So the closest thing I have to that um, in one of these groups, probably probably your group, or yeah. you said your wife's run is it? Uh, somebody shared a video of Hypersonic. Okay. And this was a Discovery Channel in like 01 when it came out. <laughs> and I'm just watching this video because I remember watching these these shows all the time. Yeah. And unbeknownst to me, here I am in my spiked hair with my fake hair color, <laughs> sitting next to my other best friend. I have two best friends, this guy, and then I have my other friend. They're just on equal footing. They've been around the, uh, pretty much the exact same You pointed at an empty chair, is he I pointed at an empty chair. He's virtually here. <laughs> the podcast people don't know that. Why are you going to break uh, down Oh, the I'm sorry. Hey, like buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so see you there. we're sitting there in the seats, and we look over. We hold hands because we're terrified. Yeah. Because at that time, this is the first time we've seen anything like that. Uh -huh. And that thing was, what, about 160 feet? Uh, uh, yeah. Roughly. I think it was like 90 or something like that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever. When you're a kid, it's a million feet high. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Well, we were we were like, let's see, 01. I was out of high school for like a year, so I would have been like 17, 18 years old. Okay. And we're just holding hands like a couple of little children. And I'm like, I'm on this video. I didn't sign a release to be on this video. I have you beat. Okay. I have you beat. With Hypersonic, oh, I have you beat. I'm all so, ears. They, uh, Kings Dominion, again, I'm close with Kings Dominion, very close. And yes. uh, they call me one day and say, Fox News, uh, New York is coming down to do a story about uh, the American traditions in an amusement park. Mm. I said, oh, perfect. They're like, yeah. could you come down and be in it? And I was like, <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. 
So I come down, and unbeknownst to them, yes. it was not a story about that. It was a story because there was several coaster incident accidents in uh. a very short period of time. And they called Cedar Point and said, we want to do something about safety. And they said, no, because yeah. every smart park is going to say, well, no, you're not going to come here and talk about safety. Yeah, exactly. Well, King's it's Dominion didn't know it was about going to be about safety. And so all of a sudden it turned into a safety video, like our amusement parks safe, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Well, uh, th- that's a whole side part to it. So they're interviewing us about uh, hypersonic and all this Especially stuff. Especially Fox News. Look out. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. I don't you never care like, know what side of the happen. party you're on. Like, they're over dramatic <laughs> about everything. <laughs> And, uh, and so me and a friend of mine, Devin Olson, he was in high school at the time. Yeah. Uh, we're both the super enthusiasts talking about the rides. And yeah. uh, they're doing a mic check. And, yeah, I'm on radio and stuff like that. Sure. So they're like, oh, we need to do a mic check. We just need you to talk for like two minutes straight. Yeah. I'm like, sure, I can do that. And uh, Well, I'm a roller coaster enthusiast, and the life of a roller coaster, let me tell you about the life of a coaster. We're very lonely. We're very yeah. – no <laughs> girls like roller coaster. Th- you know, I'm doing this whole, like, just stupid yeah, spiel about riffing. how the dating life of a coaster enthusiast just sucks. <laughs> Trying to get, make people laugh. Hoping that some girl's listening to the yeah, well, audio. Well, well <laughs> what, I was, what I was hoping was it was just a mic test and we yeah. weren't recording. Okay. But they actually were recording, of course, because it's Fox News. Uh, and course. they put that in the story. So I'm here talking about, well, you know, I'm dead right it's, now. It's you know, coaster enthusiast. You know, we we don't have a very good life. And they show me and Devin Ol- uh, Devin Olson on yeah. on the coaster. No, actually, it was me and the Fox News host on the coaster. You have like and some then, droopy face or something. And then they and then they, we were on another coaster, uh, Hurler. It was oh, Hurler. Hurler. And before, like, they were getting a shot of it going down the first hill. And yeah. so we're in the station. It just happens to be a whole bunch of girls. And I have no problem talking to anybody. So I'm like, hey guys, everybody, listen up. They're doing a shootout here. And we all need to put our hands up and have a great time and be energetic. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And they're all like 14-year-old girls. Yeah. You know, I'm way not interested in any of sure. these girls. Fair enough. So uh, we go on the <laughs> ride. We go down. We're done. And afterwards, I'm going around. I'm thanking you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Fox News is recording me thanking all of the girls. Yeah. And, uh, and I turn to the camera. I'm like, that's all I got. And they put that in after the, uh, well, you know, Coaster Enthusiast, a, a Lonely Life. And that's just me like... <laughs> That's all I got. And a whole bunch of girls standing around. Yeah. And then but at least they have each other and their common goal. And then they splice in a shot of where they were like, we need you guys to walk towards the camera. No, that didn't work. Walk back and then walk towards the camera. They have us walking off into the sunset because oh they recorded God. us walking back to <laughs> uh, you know position one to come back at the camera. And it's me and Devin in slow motion walking. So it made us look like we were gay. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and this is still on the internet today. Like, you could Google oh, Plinto wow. back and you're going to find this all over the place. Oh. Not that there's anything wrong with being gay. Of course no. not. No. But no. it was just the fact that Fox News thought it would be funny to mess with us in that way. Right. They were and, projecting um, a little bit. They were, like, were hey, d- <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> they were, you know, they, they were getting all sorts. This was definitely not a story about the American traditions and amusement no, parks. No, they so were trying to all over the place. dramatize as much Everything. as they could. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. But, you yeah, know, I think uh, you got me beat on that one, Clint. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> both, it was and it was a little bit on hypersonic because we wrote it together, the, me yeah. and the Fox News guy. Yeah. And uh, who, it, it was on um, the, the reporter. I didn't know the reporter, but I guess Devin knew the reporter. Yeah. But it was on um, the guy still on Fox News. Right. Yeah, the show that we were on, uh, not Alan. Alan, no. Alan Combs. No. 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 Uh, Shep Shepherd. Oh, yeah, Shepherd Smith. That's him. Yeah. That was it. Was his show? So, oh, wow. Was, and this was two thousand four, five, oh, six, wow. somewhere yeah, there. That's way back. Yeah, way, way back. So I don't know how the hell we're going to top that story. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, back to Funland. So. Back to Funland. Yeah, so people want to come down to Funland. What uh, well, you know? What, what what to expect? Well, I mean, it's it's gonna be a good time. You yeah. know, uh, it's, we have season passes. So if uh, no it, kidding, yeah. season passes. Yeah, we started that last year. So we're like an amusement park. So why not? What's so, the current going rate for a season pass? Uh, well, you can get the uh, the ride and play, which okay. is just rides and attractions, and that's gonna be sixty nine ninety nine. And then you can go ninety nine ninety nine. That's gonna get you rides, attractions, and some video games. So like Halo. We played yeah. that. That's going to be included with the... Uh, uh, and so this is basically like 365 days? Yep, from the date of purchase. Wow. So and we're only closed on Thanksgiving and Christmas, so those are the only two days you're going to miss. Uh, no blackout dates, no nothing. Just come have fun with us. So it's wow. uh, we always enjoy it. What's yeah, and, and we, I mean, tonight, Friday night is a season pass holder night, so you'll yeah. see everybody with their lanyards walking around. We played laser tag, yes, we and did. there's a whole bunch of season pass holders in there, like they knew who I was because we used to play laser tag yeah. in there with them. 
And John so, Luke Picard, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jean Luc, <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's coming back. I didn't. He's know you, coming I, back. I didn't know you could program names in well, there. Well, and that's a thing. So we, uh, and uh, there's way more information than anybody needs of to course. know. Of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, when we I'm first the, opened the arena three years ago, Clint, yeah? I'm sorry, I'm the king of sidebars. Like people that have been listening <laughs> to this podcast long enough, they know that we go all over the place. All over the place. We and have okay. I, I, they accept it by now. So. Uh, this is off the tangent of tangent. You're going to have to remind <laughs> us to get back to laser tag. Okay. okay. So uh, I have a podcast called In the Loop. Yes. I'm, I'm not Cheap on plug. it. Yeah, I'm not Good on plug. it very often anymore because I'm always working here. Yes. But uh, back in the day, the Blog Talk Radio days, we yes. br- mentioned that briefly. Um, we used to, uh, in the chat room, yes. when we were doing live shows, if we were off topic and the people didn't like it, they were their code word was watermelon. <laughs> they would just start, you'd just start watermelon, 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 yeah. and you were like, oh, we're off topic, we need to get back get on back topic. On board, and yeah. so we actually had a spin-off show called In the Loop Watermelon, where it was nothing about coasters and yeah. whatever we wanted to talk about, <laughs> because we'd get off topic so often. But yeah. uh, now it's we've known each other for you know, 13 years, so off topic, there's no off topic anymore. Yeah. We know each other more than anybody should, That and we, we see each other twice a year. Like right. when I go down to IAPA, we'll see each other briefly, and then uh, maybe one other time a year, they'll come up here, I'll go down there. And then it's just just through the podcast. You but, should uh, just record like remotely and have them splice it in later. Just say this is Clint's <laughs> remote report. Well, I, I, it's what I should do. I got a nice road mic sitting up in my office that oh, I can do go. stuff yeah. with, and I just I just never get a chance to. So yeah, and uh, yeah, but uh, oh, laser tag. So yes, laser uh, tag. Laser tag. Back ding, to ding, laser ding. tag. Yeah, we uh, we when we first got the system, we had a yeah. membership computer that you could uh, you know buy a five dollar card right. and use it in an RFID chip, and, and nobody nobody did it. And uh, and so I said to the owner, well, we have season passes now. Yeah. What if the next round of season passes, we buy RFID chip in the play card? Yeah. And uh, and then when people play, right. they'll be able to just have it for free. It's a free perk with your season pass. Yeah. And so I'm trying to pull up my season pass with one hand here. <laughs> so there's an RFID chip in there. Okay. And uh, so you can then program your own name in, keep track of your stats, and uh, I'm, oh, you know, wow. all that stuff. So. Uh, you just scan in, and right. uh, it knows who you are when you're playing. You kept saying, "Hey, I saw your name pop up on my yeah. gun," you know, yeah. three or four times. But uh, yeah, and then you just run around and, and play. I'm surprised you don't have a uh, pass that says like the boss or the something, boss, right? Like that's it unlocks my, that's everything. That's the other card. <laughs> oh, they, oh, so there's two cards. Okay, that's the that's the that's the card that that's the gold card that's gonna get you to on anything you want, uh, pretty much. So uh, like we walked up the halo, I just yeah, you it. just. And uh, and we play so yeah that's so what, a fun so part. So what the hell you need the other one for? So you have to scan both well, of them. Was, How does that work? So I'm I just had a nerd. I like to figure. I had the stuff very out. first season pass. Obviously, okay. I had to test yeah. it, and make sure the system worked. Of course, and then yeah. When we got the RFID, I was like, well, I got to have the very first RFID season pass. So yep. I actually have the other one in my wallet, the very yeah. first one, which has like <laughs> zero 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 one on it. Right. And uh, and so yeah, I carry this around uh, you know, just so I have my uh, login for my uh, vest when I play. Yeah, because you know it's it's not it's not uncommon that I end up playing laser tag during my work hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. And and to bring it back around full circle, um, one of the things I talk about on this podcast so frequently is doing what you love and following your passion. And to have you on here to talk today about your passion for amusement parks and roller coasters, and you're in this industry. Mm -hmm. That's huge. You're doing what you love. And for quality of life, I mean, you talk about being on the radio, and I'm sure there's a part of you that at some point maybe you – Kind of enjoyed it. At, no, maybe I mean, I wouldn't, early on. I wouldn't be you wouldn't, podcasting still yes. if if I didn't like that. And you know, I still do the YouTube videos. Yeah, and uh, I don't I don't get as uh, intense as I used to. I have you know uh, 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 DSLR cameras and stuff. Right. Like I have all the high tech equipment, and I just run around with my cell phone. Like I right. just buy a really good cell phone and go around and just video with that because really the YouTube listeners and stuff they don't care. They just they just they just want the content. They don't want the uh, the high quality. So I just bought whipping uh, something. Uh, the Canon G7X. Uh, see? This thing is boss. Yeah. Like a little selfie screen action. Nobody can see this, by the way. But I got, I've got. i got the new Google Pixel 3. Oh, with the okay. I've heard the super, camera's really good on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The super uh, wide uh, selfie camera. So, yeah. That that helps out a lot, I would imagine. The iPhone, <laughs> I, I'm team I've got iPhone. Long, I've got long arms, so that usually helps. But, yeah, the super selfie, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm team iPhone all day, but, yeah, the uh, selfie This podcast camera. is over. <laughs> 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 but the point is to wrap it around with a bow to put a bow on this night or this podcast. I don't want to say if it's day or night because you got to keep it kind of ambiguous. You know? Yeah. But the point is, 
you have a passion, you're doing what you love, and I would imagine quality of life at this point, even though you're a very busy guy, it's got to be just phenomenal, right? you got to be love over it. the moon, like, happy. Love it. You know, I, I like to think that what I'm doing, I'm good at. Right. Um, you know, we're really, we're, we're very successful. Yes. Uh, and I have a great team that works for me. Right. And it, it's really, it's fun coming to work. You yeah. know, I know, and I know people say that, but the, it, it's fun land. I mean, yeah. how could I not how have fun? How can I not have fun? There, yeah. Obviously, there's stressful points to the job. Sure. I mean, you know. A lot of logistics it, you is, handle. Is a, a $1.2 million go-kart track, are we going to make money with that? You know, yeah. is it going to be successful? Uh, you know, we're putting, a, uh, we're putting a pretty big wager on that, you know. So yeah. uh, that's stressful. And, uh, you know, we're building it. So it's like, okay, well, I need to make sure all this stuff is happening. So that's yeah. stressful. and. You know, sometimes you're going to have guests who aren't happy with your performance, course, and every you time. have to talk with them, and that can yeah. be stressful. And uh, but for a majority, I mean, you know, we walk around and we play laser tag with some kids that uh, you know come here often, and yeah. uh, you know, we see the, uh, a lot of season pass holders who come frequently, and we get to hang out with them and yeah. uh, and talk with them, and uh, it's all about making everybody's day. You know, you, trying you, to make you uh, follow, as many smiles as possible. Do you follow uh, Gary Vaynerchuk? Gary V, you follow him? I don't, no. Okay, you got to follow him. He has a thing where he says, there's no reason to do shit you hate, do shit you love. Mm -hmm. He talks like that, by the way. <laughs> uh, so if, if that's... This uh, is fun land, sir. <laughs> I, know, I know. Well, we're in a, we're in a locked room. Can, uh, I'll whisper that We do not time. have poop emojis on our... Uh, <laughs> all put, over the I'll place. I'll put the explicit <laughs> tag on this podcast. But... There's no reason to do shit that you hate. And yeah. you're in here. You're doing what you love. love and it. I love that. I think I think you should definitely check him out. Very inspiring guy. Inspired me to start documenting my weight loss journey, which got me into using a podcast as a vehicle to document the weight loss journey and get out of my comfort zone and meet new people. I feel like we're going to be friends after this. Is that I, is that a fair definitely. statement? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, well, we got to go do the Star Flyer or the Sky Flyer together down at, at that, Kings Dominion. You're so. on. Next season, yeah. you are on. I got yeah. the Platinum. He's got the platinum. I don't know if he's going to be brave enough to go on it, but you could probably film it yeah. for us. <laughs> what, are, what are they still using up there? They're still using VHS tapes. Oh, I, hope I, they've I don't think that. I don't even think they film them anymore. Oh well, so then. they just stopped doing that. So he's going to have to. We do could it. take DSLRs into theme parks, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. If not, I'll bring my G7. X. You know, we, got, we got it. So it, it's funny. Uh, Sky Coaster uh, is the company that built that. Yeah. And they're very, very. You know, you can't have phones out and doing stuff like that. Yeah. Well. I went down to a park uh, fun spot down in uh, Kissimmee, and they have the world's tallest, 300 and something feet tall. Right. And uh, they would allow us to bring a GoPro if we duct taped it to our hand. Okay. And so I'm like, show me where to sign we'll, up. We'll do that. And so I went and bought a GoPro because I was like, well, we're not going to miss this opportunity. Nope. Don't no. Never used a GoPro before. This is my first <laughs> GoPro. And uh, we, you know, get, I, as we're starting, I hit the record button and I'm holding it out and we're freaking out because it's yeah. 300 feet, you know, right down to the ground. And we do the swing and we're freaking out, you know, totally, totally yeah. out, out there. It all finishes up and I look at it and I go, it's not recording. Oh, it's in camera mode. I took a picture. Uh, can we do that again? Because we got and we and now uh, yeah. we're still scared, but not as as scared as the first time. But we have to act more yeah. scared because you know it's a second. And this actually, it is funny if you ever watch any of the videos uh, of uh, uh, in the loop uh, me on doing stuff. Yes, um, it, we never get it on the first take, and so. Right. We'll, we'll go to an amusement park during media day and their cameras won't work and we'll have to ride it like three times to get the take we need. Yeah. And we'll do a thing. Well, hey, we're riding this for the very first time and yeah. we'll hold up actually how many we've been doing. Yeah. And the people at home didn't see that, but it's I hold up three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and, uh, and Alan Schulke, who built uh, Twisted Timbers, okay. uh, he's a head engineer for um, uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Construction. Yep. We were doing Wicked Cyclone up at Six Flags, uh, New England. Yep. And, uh, or no, actually it was Twisted Twisted Timbers. There's a Twisted Timbers, Timbers one. Okay. And so I held up three because it was actually my third time because, again, they screwed it up. Something happened. Yeah. And it was his fifth time, so he holds up five because oh, he got nice. it. He, he knew what was on going it. on because yeah. we me it messed up at, at, uh, at uh, Six Flags New England, so we had to do that same thing. And, yeah. like, years later, he still knew the, the gig and, and, and oh, did it or the awesome. gag. So, uh, but, yeah, it was, yeah. Well, by the Never way, we, the we do the podcast in one take, and I'm looking at I don't think we've recorded anything. It's not even recorded. We have to do this all over again. I'm sure we can make it work. Well, let's go to <laughs> let's go to IHOP and we'll just take over. You know, uh, have some. Uh, well, I guess water. It's a diet. Yeah, show, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Fruit? Do they have fruit at IHOP? I think they do. All I right. don't know if it's good fruit or not. <laughs> Put it on pancakes. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I got. I got to tell you, Clint. I've had an absolute blast. You would not believe that an hour and a half has gone by. 
We've done like uh, one this, hour, 23 minutes. This is killing me because I did research today. And yeah. I found out your longest podcast was an hour and 41, and I was going for the record. Who? So I was like, oh, man, there's an was hour and Was that the one 41. with my wife? Or? I, don't, I don't even remember. Okay. I was just scanning through. I was like, okay, there's a coaster one. I'm going to listen to that. Yeah. And then I went through, and I'm like, okay, okay, uh, hour, we got that. Hour, we got, oh, yeah. hour and 41 minutes. How are we going to do that? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll have something to uh, go after uh, next time, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, well, we got to get you back on to talk about this big jump we're going to do on, oh, yeah. on the Extreme Sky Flyer. Yeah, well, so. we, we get the new go, uh, go-kart track. You guys got to come down and oh, ride some go-karts with us. Now so. you're talking. <laughs> this is this, Folks, I want, you to, I want you to understand this. Again, Clint and I have met for the first time today. Mm-hmm. We just spent an hour and a half talking. We've actually been here for like three hours, but like we've never met. We've never talked. And this is why um, there's another great YouTube channel, and we might get to your hour and 43 here because okay, Gary just goes go. off on sidebars. <laughs> there's a YouTube channel. If you haven't checked them out, check them out. They're called Yes Theory. You talked about that in the Roller Coaster Podcast. Great. Yep. It's all about seeking discomfort, getting out of your comfort zone. And so for me to come in here and meet with a complete stranger mm-hmm. on, on your turf and sit here and talk to you for an hour and a half, and I feel like I've probably known you for 10 years now at this point. We're practically family at this yep. point now. Very similar um, interests. Exactly. And so I just would encourage people, this is the big punchline, the big gotcha moment at the end, to challenge yourself to try new things, mm-hmm. to seek that discomfort, to borrow yes theory, because that is their line, but to try new things and be adventurous with it. And and what you will find, like I found today, you make new friends, you spend three hours with somebody, you talk to them, you feel like you've known them for 10 years. Clint, I'm going to shake your hand. It was this awesome. This has been so thank awesome. Thank you very much for stopping I mean, by. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. I feel like we've just had an incredible time, and I'm going to see how long I can drag out the outro and get to hour 40 now. <laughs> well, I had more stories. I could tell. Like, well, okay, so I'm, and I'm sorry. No, no, tangent, you're fine. You're fine. So getting out of the comfort zone. Like, okay. this has not always been me. Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I, in high school, I was a very, like, uh, voted most nothing. Like, right. nobody was voting me anything. So you're very introverted. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. Intra- introverted means you're very close. You're very shy. You don't. That was high school. Man. Yeah, yeah. And I made. I made a self conscious. Me too. Thing in, when I went into college, my first. And I was not college. It was tech school. So yeah. it's like you know, two classes in the morning and then off to radio go- uh, yeah. jobs. And uh, I, I walked in. and I said, "That's not going to be me. I'm going to be. I'm going to be fun." Yeah, and so I, I tried to turn that around, and uh, and you know when we went to Cedar Point with my college buddies, we went to Cedar Point that year. I, I would get a, a a whistle from the gift shop, right? And I would go around, and I'd start doing stupid like street mime stuff <laughs> in the middle of the midway yeah. for no reason, yeah. and that's not me. But I was like, this is vacation me, you know. I'm gonna oh, be. Yeah. This is gonna be me Nobody on vacation. Knows me here, Nobody by knows the way. me. I could do this. I'm wearing a beanie propeller hat. Is that where that comes? That's from? where it comes from. And I would, nice. I would, I would have my whistle and I'd blow and I'd try to make people do stuff without Bring saying words. Bring that thing over here, real quick. Bring that thing over here. Would, Let's see what uh, you got okay, here. Okay, hold on. All right, there we go. Let's bring this thing over here. I love it. Now, there love, we go. I like the to get the stories behind. Beanie is on. Behind beanie stuff. Is on. So. Uh, year number one at Cedar Point, I wanted a goofy hat yes. that was going to, you know, make me stand out. Yes. And so uh, I get this like Joker hat that had like, you know, like bells oh, on like, it. Yeah, they, yeah, the yeah. Little... And it was so hot, yeah. like it was cloth, and it was just it was <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Uh, and I have it still. It's hanging on my wall sure. in my roller coaster shrine at my house. You have a roller coaster shrine. Yeah, it's a shrine. Do you of, have like, a YouTube video on that, by the way? I do somewhere. Like, right, yeah, I had it, it in like three different houses because over the years I've just I have the groundbreaking shovel from Hypersonic. Yeah, I have uh, you know pieces from coasters at uh, Dollywood and wow. all over the place. But yeah, my coaster shrine. Uh, the, uh, the the original the original beanie, which wasn't even a beanie, and then I have the original actual propeller beanie that I right. wore as well. And this is like <laughs> number 176. Like, I've gone yeah. through so many. Um, but in uh, this one, actually, this is a new new type. Like, this one, actually, the, the old ones, they didn't spin this well. This one wow. is brand new. This was $16, Where not $8. Where does this $8. come from? Cedar Point, you said? No, cl- no they don't sell them anymore. Oh. I have to get it off Amazon. Like, they, they don't oh, sell Amazon, them in the music okay. parks. Yeah. But uh, was that a frog it? up there? You it is. A frog and a star? I, it makes it spin better. I don't know. <laughs> it spins great though, so I love it. Yeah. I actually bought it. Uh, I have a friend who does a podcast. Uh, excuse me. Uh, theme park families. Yeah. It's a, a father son team, Andrew and Alex. Okay. And uh, they have a uh, well. Uh, Alex has a brother. Yeah. No wait. 
Adam and Andrew. Alex is the brother. Sorry, okay. Adam and Andrew, and <laughs> Alex is the little one. Yeah. And uh, I said, well, you know, they're coming up. Can I can I get him a beanie? And his dad was like, yes, do that. I, right. They were meeting us at Cedar Point. I was like, I'm going to bring him a beanie. And so I got him a beanie, and now his they fight over it, the two brothers. <laughs> so, But it was this beanie, and his hat was always twirling around like crazy, yeah. and mine was just stiff you know it wouldn't do anything and people yep. would want to flick it and it wouldn't flick or do anything <laughs> and so i i was like okay well i'm gonna buy that one you know right. and i got this and it's more comfortable and everything i love it but uh you know my point is when we're talking about uh you know getting out of your comfort you yes know, it's huge uh, I, I would do that sporadically you know at cedar point i would do that uh and it just started you know I, I was snowballing into my regular life yeah um you know, I would do stuff with radio where I'd have to get in front of, you know, a huge, you know, like, intro uh, uh, celebrity, you know, at a, yeah. you know, thousands of people kind of thing. Crowd, yeah. And uh, you'd have to go out there and just... You guys be, ready yeah. for this? You'd Come just, on exactly. down! You'd, just have to yeah. be, you'd have to feel like an idiot. Yeah. But then realize, well, that's not the way you're being perceived. You know, yeah. you're being perceived differently. And uh, They think of you like you're a star. Yeah, and so that's, I just, okay, well, uh, that's what I got to do. So, and, and I still do that. I don't have any problem going up to people now. Yeah. You know, I talk to people all the time. I go to amusement parks by myself. Yeah. So, like, my wife, you know, she doesn't like to go to amusement parks by herself. Sure. But, uh, you know, she enjoys going with me. And when I go, I never end up riding anything I was talking to people. Yeah. I run into people who watch the podcast or uh, watch the videos, and we talk to them, and then you get to know other people, and it, it drives some of my friends crazy, the ones that want to ride coasters, no matter, like, 24-7, that's what we're yeah. here for, and all I'm doing is talking to people, you know, walking back sure. and forth and stopping and all that stuff, but, <laughs> yeah, to your point, uh, love love talking to people, uh, have no issue, but yeah. that wasn't always me, you know? No, and that's, it's amazing how we go along and we and we grow as as humans and we learn to try new things mm-hmm. and and again I just I cannot I I'm trying to I'm trying to like formulate this into words like what tonight it's like means the, to me it's this like is, the movie Yes Man wasn't it yeah was that yes Jim Carrey Man. movie where he, uh, there, he was told all he all he can do is say yes anytime a question is, is asked he has to say yes I don't think I ever saw that yeah and so he's like oh do you want to go get drunk tonight and he th- he had to say yes because that was the premise Hell of yeah. the or you know, I don't think that was part I, it was a long time ago but they were like yeah. there, there's like a girl wanted to like go take him on a date and everything she would ask no matter how crazy it was he would have to say yes oh my because God. that was that was the premise of whatever self help seminar he went to and it wasn't literal you're not supposed to say yes to everything but that's really right. what changed his life was because he had to say yes to everything so yeah i'm gonna start saying yes more yes. i think yeah and it's more uh, positive right yeah i just I'm, I'm just trying to think like how to how to how to describe what this is other than try try different things guys because mm-hmm. this is this is freaking wild man yeah what a, what a what a crazy night <laughs> in a good way. I mean that in a good way. Well, what, what you can do okay. to get your listeners more involved, and this yes. is this is the plug for Funland now. Let's do it. You should have a meet a listener meetup. Okay. You know, get people out of their comfort zone. We're all going to come. You know, whether it's Funland or go to a you know somewhere up in uh, D.C. or wherever. You know, somewhere. Yeah. Go somewhere, and hey, l- listeners, let's get together and uh, and get you out of your comfort zone. You know, I hear you, man. I hear you. So as we wrap up here. Where do you want people to go? Tell them about you know the YouTube, the podcast. I know you say you're kind of not in the podcast full time yep. anymore, but Let's, where where do you want them to go? Tell them tell them where to go. Sure, uh, in the loop podcast is the website, and okay. that's really just for the podcast. It's like in the loop dot com or in the loop podcast dot com. Okay, so and that's again, it's just you're going to go there, and that's going to show you how to get to the yeah. in the loop podcast. Uh, and you know anything anywhere you want to listen to it in the loop podcast is sure. uh, what you're going to look up. Um, all about roller coasters, uh, you know, uh, news, a very, very nerdy kind of thing. Uh, but we also do videos. Our YouTube, right. uh, you know, is like, I don't know how many subscribers, but I know I think we just passed like 24 million views. So, um, yeah. But we've been doing it for 10 years, so it's like yeah. about time, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we we have a lot of content up there. I think we got like 3,000 videos now up there. Oh, that's so, awesome. You know, are you guys, you guys active on uh, Instagram? A lot of the listeners here are on Instagram. Uh, yes, we have an okay. in-the-loop Instagram. Okay. Uh, I, a guy named uh, Andrew runs it. Okay. And... Uh, are you, wait a minute. 
He goes but mute when mics go we on. Have, we have two Andrews that uh, help us with things. Okay. Uh, Andrew, who's on our podcast, Drew the Intern, as right. we call him, because back in the blog talk radio days, yes. he was the guy who would screen the phone calls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's worked his way up over the years. Now yes. he's one of the co-hosts. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he used to answer the phone calls for us. Uh, right. So he's Drew the Intern, <laughs> and uh, and he still is today. And, uh, and then, yeah, uh, Andrew uh, is the uh, guy who runs our Instagram, and all of us, you know, all the different guys who do the videos right. all of our own Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, I know you're on Instagram, just Clint Novak. Yeah, I don't do a lot on Instagram. I just learned how to oh, use it this man. summer, so I'm working on it. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, another Gary Sidebar. I, yeah. I, I started documenting a weight loss journey on there. Before that, it was just like bullshit pictures of me with beers in my hand and my dog yeah, and just yeah. wherever I was going. And I started documenting my journey. I saw Gary V. He had this video called A Five-Minute Plea to Do. If you haven't seen this, I'm going to DM it to you. Well, I actually haven't because you, you said you, you haven't followed him, but it's called a five minute plea to do. And it's like, you know, don't be afraid to go out and try things and do things, create things, document over create and all this stuff. And I saw this video, I got hired, fired up. It, it really yeah. got me going. And uh, so I started documenting my journey and started using hashtags and geotagging, like tagging locations. And people started to check out the page. That's awesome. And slowly but surely. You build up a community. So I got to tell you right now, Mr. Clint Novak, you got to get on that Instagram because that's where, that's where the attention's at. Look, my uh, buddy uh, T.L. Brown, Tawan Brown, he, everybody knows him as Tawan. I know him as T.L. I don't know okay. how it happened. But uh, he is a video guy. He does our videos for uh, Funland. So if you see on our videos or commercial, right. whatever, he did it. And he uh, he's you know does like trips to Israel and does all these crazy mm-hmm. videos. But every month, at the beginning of the month, he puts out a video that's one second from every day of the last month. So it's like, what, a 30, you know, 40 second video. And it's just a quick clip, like a vine yeah. of every day. That's crazy. And it's just, you know, some of it could just be him walking to the car, but then some yeah. of it could be like, you know, kids pageants or, you know, it be on the airplane to Israel or, you know, floating right. in the Dead Sea. And then, you know, oh, and then it's Halloween. You know, it's great. I, I just, I love that idea, you know, no, capturing a a, just a little tiny piece of every day and uh, and being able to uh, document it in right. just a short, you know, form that people would be interested in seeing. And you definitely, if you guys don't already have an Instagram for this place, you got to get one of those. Oh yeah, we. I don't run this stuff. It's social okay. media stuff. Yeah. I'm, you know, almost forty. I send guess. Send them, so. send them the link and tell them to listen. Yeah. Listen very closely. <laughs> Instagram Live, Instagram Stories, yeah, Instagram you, TV. Yeah, we can't share it on Funland. You said shit. So. Oh, yeah, no, no. it's just yeah. out of the room. But we can share it on in the loop because we say yeah. shit all the time. So tell, tell them to <laughs> tell them to listen privately. The social media people. But there's all these things, and this is what I've learned. It's like I have this journey that I share, but I use these tools to to put the story out there. And in that, you meet cool people. Yes. And I get people on the podcast I've never talked to. We just start talking, and and so that's how it works. And you use these tools to build community. And you build engagement, you bring people in, and you come together and you do cool things. But, you know, the businesses, you use, use it for different things. Not just to sell, like, buy my stuff. Mm-hmm. It's come check out what we have going on, and let's build a community around it. Yeah. It's a I think it would be thing. really fun, you know, if Funland, and, you know, I wish I had time to do this kind of stuff. But, yeah. you know, just we're just showing people having fun. You know, yeah. we don't have to sell it. The, the selling part is people having fun. So just yeah. show you know, some kids running around playing laser tag and, definitely. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we definitely have an Instagram. I couldn't, t- I'm sure it's like yeah. Funland of Fredericksburg, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Something like uh, that. Yeah, yeah, I know our Facebook is changing to Funland of Fredericksburg because we actually changed our name from Central Park Funland to Funland of Fredericksburg. So we're in that transition right now. Okay. It's a new logo are right they, there. Are they changing Central Park name? Is that what's going no, on? No, Central Park is staying Central Park, but okay. nobody knows what Central Park is. Oh, like yeah. everybody who's in Virginia is a transplant from somewhere. Yeah. And so you say Central, Central Park, Park you're like, oh, New York. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, nobody understands that, and uh, it, this this was here before Central Park was Central Park. Yeah. So they had the name because they knew this community was going to be Central Park. But yep. we want to uh, brand ourselves to the city of Fredericksburg, Funland, Fredericksburg. Sure. You know where we are, Central Park, Funland. You have no clue. You're like, oh, I don't know where that is. So Funland of Fredericksburg, people are going to know. Whoever thought of that, give them a raise. I will give myself a raise. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, yeah, there it is right there. You got it. I man. wish I had that kind of power. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, this is this has just been a blast, man. We'll, we're definitely going to do this again. And awesome. by the way, 
next season in Kings Dominion. We're gonna. I want people to remember this podcast because when like April, May, whenever we get the time comes around, we're gonna do and we're gonna document this. Oh, I, well, I, I, what I do is do videos at amusement parks, and yeah. really all I do, I just grab my phone and we just we just walk around and do yeah. stuff and talk. And yeah. uh, and so we'll do that, and we'll throw it up on on my YouTube page, oh, and you'll well, do some yeah. stuff and throw it up on yours. And I know I grabbed some video of you kind of secretive while you were playing uh, oh. uh, Hollowgate, so I'll well, send that to you guys yeah, too. I'll, so put, it, I'll put it on Instagram. <laughs> that, that'll be a blast. But yeah, next year I'm down. Let's do it, man. That sounds like a hell of a awesome, hell of an idea. Very good. Well, now I'll shake your hand again. One this more is the time. official wrapping up of the it. podcast. <laughs> no Thank more you guys bars. for listening. And if you want to share. Your story. All you got to do, folks, get in my DMs. Hit me up on Instagram at Gary Cantrell um, or hit me up Gary's podcast at gmail.com. Love to hear your story. Whether it's weight loss or anything, guys, this really is. This is all about sharing your story. I love to hear other people's stories and not just sharing necessarily my own stuff. I like to mix it all around. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening and we'll catch you next time. Let me tell you about hard work. Always wins dot com. It's more than just a clothing line. It is my mantra. I speak it. I wear it. I live it. And I want you to do the same. Head over to the website right now. We have shirts. We have tank tops. We have hoodies. It is getting cold outside, folks. I walked out my door. It was like 30 degrees today. We got got hats, beanie caps, phone cases. We got it all. I want to motivate you. I want to inspire you. We got the brand new I Am Worth the Fight. Are you worth the fight? Hell yeah, you're worth the fight. We got the brand new I Am Worth the Fight t-shirts, tank tops in the store right now. We got the brand new Hard Work Always Wins champion hoodies and a whole lot more. Head over to hardworkalwayswins.com and don't forget to input the code podcast at checkout because I'm taking 10% off your very first order. How about that? Join my squad, which is the Hard Work Squad today. And don't forget, when you get your merch in the mail, Tag me at Gary Cantrell. Tag at Hard Work Always Wins. And we're going to shout you out and let everyone know that you are cooler than them because you're in the Hard Work Squad. Join today.